But, <laughs> my friends, if you watch these scenes closely, you will see who I believe is the moral center of the movie, which is Fat Extra, who wrote too many Satan symbols on himself in Sharpie, <laughs> tried to wipe it off, but then they started shooting. <laughs> He's going to star in an upcoming scene, but guy. he does appear in this crowd shot at first. Yes. And he is the hero American. <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Ethan Wright, and sitting 600 miles to my right is my good friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Fantastic, Heath. Really? Yes. Okay. Eli's fantastic. <laughs> and sitting in Barack Hussein Obama's Chicago. <laughs> you know him as the upside down Wayne and Garth of cognitive dissonance. We have veteran guest masochists. Cecil and Tom, gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having us on <laughs> this wonderful <laughs> podcast of yours. We very much appreciate it. You are welcome, sir. I'm here because Noah said I had to. I said you had to, too. <laughs> right, so. Both said I had to. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. All right, let's just get right into it. Cecil, what are we going to be breaking down today? We watched Drive Angry. It's a 104-minute chase fight scene with a dash of Satan. <laughs> just a tiny That's little it. dash. A little... Little splash. TLDW done. Yeah. You know, I think that was so good. We can just call it a day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's not, get drinks. We could forget it all. Let's Save you. We're Save done. 103 Let's minutes yeah. of your life right there. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, Tom, how bad was this movie? Uh, bad enough that to figure out how long it takes to get out of hell, you only need to check the runtime for the movie, <laughs> which again is 104 again, minutes. It's a 104, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ed, is there anything you guys would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? 100% best worst fight sex scene. Ooh. Yeah. Yes, it is. That is correct. It's, it's fantastic. The best. It's the best because you do not see a derobed Nicolas Cage. That is why it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> best worst portrayal of the seemingly infinite resilience of the human body. They just <laughs> yeah. keep going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. I was going to go with best worst IMDb trivia. And there's some great ones. Here's two of my favorites. First of all, Nicolas Cage wanted to shave his head for the movie and have a tattoo covering his entire skull for yes. the whole movie yes. and they had to talk him out of it. They Why did they talk him out of that? <laughs> give him a weird mullet I know, That would have been amazing. They gave him a receding hairline mullet <laughs> instead. Yeah. Like that would have taken the audience out of the movie. Yeah, right. That, yeah, that snaps me right back every yeah. time I see that. Yeah. Uh, also, one of the main reasons Nick Cage took this movie was because of the scene when he gets shot in the eyeball because apparently in Season of the Witch, also a Cage movie from the same year, there was an eyeball thing that was supposed to happen and it got cut from the movie. So Cage was like, nice. I still get my eyeball thing this year. I'll do that. I, want, I, I need like an eyeball thing once a year. Okay. It's in my rider. Yeah. <laughs> Having been shot in the eye, I can raise my hand and say like, that's not something you actually want Sorry, in yeah. your life. <laughs> Sorry, did you say having been shot in I the eye? I was shot with a BB gun in the eye teaching Cub Scouts okay. firearm safety. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he still doesn't see correctly because of that. <laughs> That's <laughs> the reason I wear glasses. It ruined my left eye. Everybody yeah. welcome our new scout master, Dick Cheney. He's going to be uh, helping us out with safety. All right. And uh, Eli, you got a best worst? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst. I'm just describing what's happening in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we work hard here at God Awful Movies to come up with fun little uh, twists on the English language, little bone mows to make you chuckle, if you will. This week, I am just describing what happens, and then that <laughs> is the gig. In fairness, what the fuck else are you going to do with this movie? I tried I tried to like, I was, yeah, so now Nick, I, can, I can't make a joke about what Nick Cage is doing. He's doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, He's this doing whole movie consists of just slapping whoever's next to you. Did you see that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh! All right, well, I have a 
very intricate bathing ritual before I talk about <laughs> Nicolas Cage. So I'm going to make that happen while we take a quick break. And then we'll be back to tell you all about Drive Angry. All right, Nick, remember what we talked about. I'm not allowed to wear my sunglasses inside. No, no. The other thing. I didn't invent karate. Stop saying I did. No, no. Well, I mean, yes. Stop doing that. But for right now, just remember, don't say yes until I tell you to. All right? Right. Got it? Got it. Okay. The cage. Don't do that either. Gentlemen. Jerry, Mr. Cage, thanks so much for making time, guys. We really hope you end up being able to just do this project with us. We're really I'm excited in. about it. I'm in. God damn it. Oh, what did I just sorry. say? What? what? A, a mint. Mr. Cage said he would like a mint. Oh. Please. It sounded like he said, I'm in. He, I'm in. he wants a mint. Ah, okay. Well, well, here you go. Okay. So the movie, it's called Drive Angry. I'll and do it's going to be. It. Yes. You will, Nick. You will eat that mint that you just got. And, eat it. And you're going to be playing Milton, a man who escaped from hell to avenge his daughter and save his granddaughter from a satanic cult. You guys sold me. When do we shoot? On these mints, when do we shoot more mints into our mouths? And the answer is now, Nick, right now. Okay, so a a anyway... It's going to be in 3D. I will do People the don't movie. Get tired I will of 3D. be in the film. Yes yeah. is the answer to whether or not I will take part. He he was just what Mr. Cage means. Yeah, we'll do the fucking movie. So glad to have you on board, Nick. So happy to hear it. You won't you won't regret it. Much. I invented karate. No, you didn't. <sighs> Jesus, Eli, what are you doing under the toilet? What is the under the toilet? What? Hey, see, so that's it. I'm gonna murder you. That no, is, no, don't. I'm your tushy. That's not better, man. That, if anything, that's worse than... No, 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 no. Not that tushy. The Hello Tushy 3.0 Modern Bidet Attachment. It's stylish, eco-friendly, easy to install, and affordable. Wait, wait. They make a bidet that's not like a thousand dollars or super complicated? They do. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and it cuts toilet paper use by 80%. So the Hello Tushy Bidet pays for itself in a few months. Plus, every Hello Tushy Bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Wow, that does actually sound really good. It is. And right now, you can go to hellotushy.com slash awful to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer for our listeners. Go to hellotushy.com slash awful for 10% off. hellotushy.com slash awful. You know what, Eli? I think I just might, but... If the Hello Tushy 3.0 is so cheap and easy, why why are you hiding behind the toilet? I love you. Okay. Leave. And we're back. And we're going to start with some logos from a professional film team. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? That's what used to movies yeah. from like the, the Christian Dairy Council of Sheboygan or whatever. <laughs> Mormon PTA. I was truly impressed by the artwork on this. Like nobody got physically injured, it appeared. Yeah. So... It's just like a, a bit of construction paper that a little thing is pushing across the screen <laughs> or whatever. It's none of that. It looks it actually looks real on this one. It's good. Yeah. And we're going to start with a car escaping from the gates of what I'm pretty sure is Bowser's Fire Castle from Nintendo 64. <laughs> a goblin prison. Yeah. Nick Cage is jumping a 70s Cadillac out of a goblin prison. To stay. It's a great fucking start to a movie. To oh, be yeah. Honest. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It does. It does look very realistic like it does not <laughs> at all have a ring of i mean just the, the just the authenticity alone i they must have paid extra for that for the real one college kid to animate yeah. that in his lunch break <laughs> we also get a vo from nick cage here and he's like badass motherfuckers are never fast enough in the end they will all be accounted for <laughs> and i love that first of all but i'm pretty pretty sure it's Nick Cage talking at craft services in real life. And just like, <laughs> it's good we got All right, the mic Nick, on him. you want the last bagel. You can have the last bagel. There's no need to <laughs> monologue like that. Also, I I have something to talk about about this movie. It's really important to me spiritually. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I just need to get this out there. Okay. This movie was shot for 3D. Yeah. And released in theaters in 3D. And 
They just stopped making the 3D version of it. So <laughs> as you watch this movie, when things fly towards the screen, it's very important that you remember that was meant to be viewed in 3D. <laughs> yeah, but the whole, I will say too, like this movie reminds me like why the whole 3D effect is not in use. I wanted to gouge out one eye to lose depth perception <laughs> so as not to accidentally see something in fucking Wait, 3D. Wh what do you mean they stopped make like, they did a couple scenes that worked for 3D and they were like, ah, fuck it. And then they just made the, made the rest of the movie. Yeah. So yeah. if you watch it, very clearly, the beginning of the movie and the very end of the movie yeah. are in 3D. Yeah. And that is it. Well, there's like two other shots. There's like a slow-mo bullet bullets. in the middle. It's always the bullet shoots are yeah. the ones that come out and they like come at your face real slow like bullets do. So yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're, now we're going to cut over to Nick Cage chasing some bad guys. Yes. That guy drives like Eli, the first guy. Okay, so he comes around the corner. He clips the curb, right? He clips the curb. Then he, for no fucking reason, swerves three times driving down the road. Nothing's happening behind him. And then he spins out without stopping in this in the like at a stop sign as if someone had dropped a venomous snake on the floor and he was trying to step on it and then hit some of the pedals also known as going to the airport with Eli yeah. that's and then he parks and backs yeah. out slowly through a tree branch about 20 feet long gets hit Scrapes in the eye the with Tesla. it Tesla yeah it's right next to him yeah I would love nothing more than to see an action movie a, like a car chase action movie with Cecil in the passenger seat just shaming somebody for their driving. <laughs> then halfway through the car chase, pull over, I'm driving. He gets out, takes the wheel, drives off. I'll make you that movie. You can't do this. Absolutely. <laughs> Patreon goal, $1. <laughs> no, Can there's we no amount of money that Eli? puts me in a car with Eli. Yeah. There's no amount of money that puts me in a car with Drive Eli. badly with Eli. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he catches those bad guys, gets some information from them. And now we're going to cut over to Fat Louie's roadside diner. Hold on. Hold Wait a minute. On, you're going on, a little on. fast. I've you're got a little fast. There's some more stuff. There's some more stuff. I want to say my favorite part of this whole explosion blow up thing, because at one point they drive down the road, Nick Cage spins his car out and then a car drives our truck, drives into Nick Cage's front end yeah. and then flips end over end it as does. if We've sort of create, creatively decided how physics work in this yeah. movie. <laughs> His car is made you. of vibranium in this we've, moment. Yeah, we yeah. take you creative Cecil. license with physics in this movie. Yeah. Like the car, it must be made out of like anvils or something. The, car, <laughs> the truck crashes into it. The car doesn't budge. Yet I presume the hell car is now damaged beyond repair yeah. because it's never used again. He leaves it. So yeah, he, walks he has away. to abandon the hell car yeah. because it was in an accident, but it clearly did not mind being in that accident. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> yeah, now I'm thinking about it. There was just like a mediocre Cadillac in hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like just a car from fucking Cuba that got lifted. It's like old and not very good, but eh, whatever. Yeah. And more importantly, later in the movie, it will be revealed that this is Satan's car. <laughs> no, but it's not even say doesn't Satan bring his own car that's different from this? This no. is just a shitty car that was like parked somewhere in hell. And he was like, Yeah, I'm taking this. I shouldn't have left my keys in there. <laughs> this place is full of crooks. <laughs> he jumps in the car and just pulls the visor down. They're right there the whole time. Now I'm just picturing Satan being all racist on next door. All right, I don't want to be the guy to have to say this. But has anyone noticed there's a lot of schmur schmur in the neighborhood lately? <laughs> also, one other important thing from this scene before we move on, Nick Cage reveals that his quest here is to find the girl. The so girl. that's important. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very specific. And also, he steals the Nazis' bag of MacGuffin, which will matter. Yes. Yeah. Matter. <laughs> also, at one point shoots like a tire iron out of the dude's hand, but that guy is so dedicated, he picks that tire iron up with the other hand to go in <laughs> and gets the other hand shot All right, off. now I'll so, get him. Uh, okay, so then the guy's like, stand there. okay, fine, you win. You win this round, Nick Cage. <laughs> well, call it a draw. little stump. Thank you, coward. <laughs> now, here is a fun game to play with Nick Cage's lines throughout this movie. If you pretend that Nick Cage has not seen the script except for the lines he says... <laughs> 
all of his lines make sense because he's finding out the plot at the same time as us. I don't think you have to pretend that. It That's says you know along. A Nick Cage movie. Yeah. It's the Nick Cage method of method acting, actually. Yeah. It's a whole mm -hmm. thing for it. Are we just going to like, we're just going to ignore the, oh, I just, hold on real quick. We're just going to ignore the music. The music that this movie <laughs> opens with is so 80s hair metal. The fucking hairspray stung my eyes. I had to oh, pause the movie. I yeah. love the music in this movie, if I'm being honest. Jesus. Wait, what? I loved it. it, it that's it. I'm fighting you. Yeah. Send me your address. I was so. It makes you so happy. And it's just. Not, what are you talking about? Cocaine this flashbacks. This is like your fucking neighbor's <laughs> shitty garage band. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is, I was doing a lot of cocaine in the 80s when I was six. <laughs> this yeah, is apparently. the waitress won't give Heath her number. So he's going to put this on the jukebox <laughs> and sway back and forth to it aggressively in the corner. So now we're going to cut over to Fat Louie's Roadside Diner, where the star of the movie, Amber Heard, with the $500 haircut, works as a waitress. <laughs> <laughs> that's the part you see, Zahn, that's unbelievable about her character. <laughs> I'm just saying it's the first thing that is unbelievable okay, about enough. her fair character. Yeah. Right. So Nick Cage is on a mission to get some information, right? So he sits down at a table and a different waitress comes over and he's like, have you ever heard of... Stillwater Marsh or Deacon's Tree. And she's like, dude, what? Do you always talk <laughs> like what? I just walked We're over. We're in Colorado. You, need, like, you name like coffee and eggs now. What are you doing? <laughs> but apparently she has information about yeah. those places or whatever. Where he's going to find the girl. Two states away. Yeah. She knows exactly what he's talking about. Yes. Right. <laughs> and they do a little bit of kissing. Oh. Yeah. But they do kiss in Nick Cage is a crazy person style. <laughs> yes, so they do. This actress, by the way, I snubbed for the Oscar. She was amazing. <laughs> she is one, supposed to pretend to be attracted to Nick Cage, which is physically impossible to do. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you're right. He is he's an attractive man. You know man. what? You're convincing me. At the very least, a Golden Globe. I think you're you're on you're onto something here. You guys aren't attracted to Nick Cage. Get out of here. Two mm -hmm. liars. She's supposed a little. to do that thing in movies where people who are attracted rub their hands together and interlock their fingers. But Nick Cage is a coodle caboodle, so he <laughs> proceeds to hand wrestle her throughout oh, the scene. <laughs> he turns totally it in, does. He t immediately turns it into this crazy dance fight. Ooh, it's and weird. She has no idea what to <laughs> fucking do. <laughs> this actress kisses Nick Cage out of desperation for her wrist tendons. And good thing, he was about to take a bite out of her wrist tendons. <laughs> I love it when uh, she, she goes... It's a full moon tonight, and she's trying to flirt with him, but she's just like, I would like to have sexual intercourse with you because it's full moon tonight. Yeah. And he goes, full moon is in two days, you idiot. Whatever. You want to have a crazy wrist fight? And they do. And then they make out. Yeah. And then he takes an angry sip of coffee yeah. right in her face, but his face still inches from hers. Oh, Like a victory sip of coffee. It was so weird. It's missing the clues so much. It's like a girl walking in and being like, Wow, you kind of look like Brad Pitt. I don't look like Brad Pitt, you idiot. What are you, stupid? <laughs> are you a stupid person? Now, do you want to reenact this high school wrestling match with our hands or not? Take Hold it on, serious. I got, Hold on, I got to put my headpiece on if we're going to do this. <laughs> yeah. Let me get in my onesie in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Again, this is just Nick Cage normal experience at diners in real life. Like Again. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. He's having yeah. weird wrist fights. He's yelling at people. Yeah. Yeah, and, and attractive women at diners are definitely hitting on guys who look like they're, you know, a pair of Croc socks and a fucking lawnmower away from being suburban dad with a fucking mullet. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is not oozing fucking sex appeal at all. She's fucking throwing it at him. It makes yeah. no sense And whatsoever. Nick Cage is oozing a lot of things. One might argue it's the only <laughs> thing he's not <laughs> oozing. <laughs> but so he gets the weird directions that she happens to have. Short order cook grabs Amber Heard's tushy so she like for giving away free muffins. I mean, you can't give away free muffins. That's <laughs> right. Not, exactly. We have a fucking in and out list. You want to, you know, we got to make sure we have You're giving an card. card. We run it through the system. It's going to be here in a few minutes. You know yeah. what I mean? We got you got to be and she's got a heart of gold because of that. Yeah, look waitress, we established there's a penalty. You give away muffins, I grab your ass, you give away yeah. a free coke. <laughs> You gotta blow me. It's it's on the list. <laughs> it's a whole I, thing. Why did I write it's like a, a list? Menu. Down? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But she beats the fuck out of him and quits, no, which totally is pretty fun. Yeah, and yeah. quits. The most realistic scene in that entire diner is when the short order cook spits on the floor after he puts his order up. That's the most <laughs> realistic thing I've ever seen in this movie. <laughs> 
So she pulls away in her sweet Dodge Charger. While the music, fuck the pain away, is happening. <laughs> I love, oh. It's so good. Just this, the soundtrack to this is actually subtitled Songs Heath Cries to. <laughs> <laughs> These are songs Heath plays while he's doing his bathing ritual. And he's about to talk about cage cage. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No one asked about the bathing ritual. But then the car, we need a reason for her to meet Nick Cage. So the car immediately breaks down. I don't know how this happens or why this happens. To be fair, the only car I've ever been in that broke down is the time I was in Heath's. 93 Honda and it my burst sweet, into flame. My sweet Dodge Charger that yeah. has license plate drive angry is very fast. Yeah. And, and a bumper sticker that says, I break for pussy because this movie was written by basement dwelling incels. That's yeah. exactly. <laughs> this is a love letter of a fucking screenplay for people that have never touched a titty in their entire yeah. life. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I will say though, the cinematographer genuinely knows how to shoot Amber Heard in her Daisy Dukes. He does an amazing <laughs> job. A very, very nice job. There's a couple of low shot scenes there, shot from behind. He's definitely, that guy earned his pay for the day. That's yeah, all I'm he, saying. He went to oh, the yeah. Megan Fox Transformers workshop. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the same Absolutely. scene. Absolutely. It's the, it's same, the scene. same scene. He's doing the cool Luke. They all stole it from yeah, Cool yeah. Luke. Yeah. It's fine. Let me just bend alluringly at the waist. While they all I, stole yeah. it from Citizen Kane, Heath. You see, it's from <laughs> Citizen Kane is really good. Oh. Oh, now I really want Citizen a shot Kane of- with Cage and Amber. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want Orson Welles like bending over a Dodge Charger in yeah. jorts. Just, you know. <laughs> you tell me how that's a sentence and I'll blow you. <laughs> <laughs> Such a deep cut. <laughs> Anyone under the age of 50 who doesn't watch cartoons is like, what the fuck? <laughs> But Nick Cage stops by because he happens to be wandering in that direction and offers to both fix the car and not murder her. So yeah. um, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. Good deal. And evidently whatever's wrong with her car can be fixed by twisting your wrist at it. Yeah. Like she had a repair that required no tools and no parts. He just reached in. It was like, oh. Somebody just didn't screw in your flux capacitor or fucking whatever. <laughs> oh, here's the problem. You got to press the fix button. It's right here. Yeah. On the block. Oh, there's an easy button from step right under here. Let me go ahead and hit that. It's set to off. I'll just turn the car to on. Yeah. And there you go. <laughs> so I'm thinking, care. We got to reboot here real quick and then we'll, it'll work fine. Oh, the yeah. problem is uh, you left a smoke machine under your hood. That's never, shouldn't do that. And now it's time for William. Oh, my God. Motherfucking. Fitchner, my friend. He is who's, a genius. <laughs> whose name you don't recognize, but you should, because he fucking rules. He's great in everything he's ever done. He is. And he does, he manages to do his entire performance in this movie. Ironically, he makes hard eye contact <laughs> with me, Eli Bethesda Rosenberg Bosnick, the entire time being like, <laughs> oh yeah, look, now I'm doing this movie, right? Oh, look at me do this movie. I love being in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still so good. It's He's amazing. So good. He's genuinely amazing in this movie. Oh. He shows up and he he walks up to Lou's diner and Lou and that waitress who was trying to fuck Nick Cage are outside. And he's he's like, "Hey, fat fuck." And Lou's like, "What did you just say?" He's like, "I said, "Hey, fat fuck." I could call you dead fat fuck. <laughs> he <laughs> does have a very long, it's so it's good. really long pause in there. It's so it's good. Very, very long pause. But that scene inexplicably, that happens a half a second after he walks up and randomly helps that waitress throw the garbage in the dumpster. I just think that was like a reflex from just a polite guy. Like, it's not in the screenplay at all. He's just like, wait a minute, I'm just gonna help you with trash. <laughs> fuck, I'm doing a movie. Gosh, yeah. okay. All right, let it, you know what? I feel like that's organic. Like, let's keep it in there. Let's keep rolling. Keep shooting. Let's go. This scene plays like there's going to be an action bit, right? That's the proving. Yeah. yeah. Hey, fat fuck. What'd you say to me? Hwa! Karate skills. Except <laughs> no. fucking Louie is just like, well, all right, that's fair. No, you, yeah, you, no, were, I, you were addressing right. me as fat you fuck. Said right. fat yeah. 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 That's me, fat Lou. I would prefer you didn't call me dead fat. <laughs> it's 10 30 my shift's over i'm gonna go home and take a nap and then eat a pint of ben and jerry so yeah i'm a fat fuck what do you want you get you canceled on twitter william finish <laughs> <laughs> he also introduces himself as the accountant here yeah this is where he says he's yeah. the accountant and we never really find out what that means i don't think we find out what that means well because he um 
goes and gets all the lost souls from hell the way that right. accountants find all the lost. The way that a CPA would <laughs> preside over the realm of hell. Maybe it's just because he was like doing the tally of how many guys were supposed to be in hell. And he's like, wait a minute. There's one missing. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be honest. I'm more scared of our actual accountant than I am yep. of this accountant from hell. <laughs> yep. I was going to yeah. say. Our, our accountant, accountant, Tony, is fucking terrifying. <laughs> He's oh, the very person recently. I've ever spoken He's so to. mad. He, it was just over Hates email us. and I was scared. I was scared of his email. To be fair, Heathleton, you have to remember, every time you've ever spoken to our accountant, Tony, it is because he has recently spoken to me and attempted to oh, do God. my taxes first. Yeah, you're not allowed to use Tony anymore. He called me a dead fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he helped me with the garbage. So, I mean, win some, yeah. lose some. Yeah. So, yeah, now we come back to the car. Nick Cage is asking Amber Heard if her boyfriend is nice. That's <laughs> a weird thing to ask. <laughs> like, you would just stay with him if he was abusive, right? I mean, you wouldn't leave him, right? You just stay with him, right? I mean, come on. Let's not be stupid here. You live in a trailer park, lady. Your choices really aren't that big. You know, you don't gotta look, you know, you're spoiled for choice. <laughs> yeah, her answer is equally weird, though. She's like, oh, is he a nice guy? <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's like a really... That means no, by the way. If anyone ever answers that question... Yeah, she's mouthing help me the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, that, that scene is also awesomely believable. She's like, well, I look like this, but... I don't have a lot of other options. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? And it's important to realize that the accountant is now chasing Nick Cage and therefore also Amber Heard, right? Yes. Right. So yeah. when he yeah, showed yeah, up yeah, at, the, yeah. at the diner, he's like, I'm looking, I'm looking for this guy, 6'1", 40 years old. It's <laughs> supposed to be Nick Cage, but Cage is 47 when this movie happened and he's, he's six feet, not 6'1". So he wrote himself in to be one inch taller than <laughs> seven years old. Hey, hey. You can add an extra inch. When you're describing, you get to add one extra inch. That's just, that's Come a on, gimme. You guys let Tom Cruise stand on a box. I just want to say And to prove that that boyfriend's no good, wouldn't you know it, but Amber Heard is going to walk in on her man fucking another person. That's right. And I want to say that whatever happens in this scene, I miss it because my wife, my bride, my soulmate and life partner, put her face a quarter of an inch next to mine and said, <laughs> boobs, boobs, <laughs> boobs, for four straight minutes. So I missed everything that happened in this scene. That is love, Eli Bosnick. That is love. <laughs> Did you guys happen to see My Bloody Valentine, another movie that was 3D and directed by the same director as this piece of shit? <laughs> no. Because I did, and it has the same full frontal fist fight. <laughs> like it, it's seriously in the opening huh. part of my bloody Valentine. It's like, well, I definitely want to have a completely naked woman getting her ass kicked, <laughs> like physically beaten a fucking naked woman. I don't want to make any movie where there are no naked women not getting beaten. It's a, it's a weird calling card. But yeah. yes, that's what we get right here. I got to be honest though. This woman that Amber Heard pulls off of her boyfriend and then beats the fuck out of her. The woman is completely naked and arguing back, like like <laughs> making points, which like, I, there's a lot of respect. Like switching that power dynamic and being like part of the argument while you're naked and you just got pulled off a of fuck. That's pretty. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then Amber Heard's boyfriend, he doesn't like how you know, mouthy he's getting, so he goes to give her a whooping. But don't worry, Nick Cage comes in and does. The fight choreography that 47-year-old Nick Cage is going to yeah. Again, it's an action movie beat, right? Where he's supposed to be like, wah, wah. But instead, the guy's just like, oh, you stood near me, Nick Cage. I'm asleep now. There I am. <laughs> the cinematography I was applauding earlier when he had his beautiful shots of Amber Heard also has a very wonderful back zit shot here where he pulls away from Stone Cold Steve Austin and he's got the thing in the back where you can see the back zits. And I'm like, okay, no, I, I think we want to pass on the back zits. More Amber Heard in the shot, less shirtless, tiny, stone-cold Steve Austin. I think we need a lot less of that. I just want to point out that that same guy gets beat to shit by Nick Cage because yeah. he mostly doesn't fight back while Nick Cage hits him slowly. And then an air conditioner falls on his face. Yep. Yeah. I need to point that out because later... He'll reappear fine. Totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fine. He got a black eye from that. 
<laughs> yeah, he got he got a shiner when an air conditioner fell <laughs> onto his fucking face. He was beaten unconscious and then air conditioner. Oblique angle. No, <laughs> it's not though. We watch it happen. It falls directly, <laughs> directly onto his, on his face. face. Full weight. Yeah. Where else are you supposed to put conditioner other than your head though, Tom? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> It only hurts him if you uh, repeat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just keep dropping the thing on his face. He wakes up with two shiners. He's just like, no, I'm fine. <laughs> but a beautiful long head of hair. <laughs> his hair like, He's got no, Nick Cage's hair. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to shave it and put a tattoo on there, but oh, you know. I'm your Venus. <laughs> <laughs> so now we cut to them driving at night and it's time for Nick Cage to remember something that didn't happen to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We get a flashback and this terrible thing happens, but Cage isn't there and he's the one in the flashback. Yeah. Okay, but the cultists at this point are chanting and I swear to God they're chanting Toga, Toga. <laughs> they are. Toga. They are absolutely chanting Toga. The CC, the closed captioning agrees with you, Tom. They were, they were chanting Toga. So, Heath, you were a little coy just now about what happens during this flashback. Would you explain the um, inciting incident of the film for us? I, is this the incite? There's an incitement to. There's a reason this of movie course. happens, and this uh -huh. is it right here. Okay, this is it. We'll say this is the inciting. Walk our audience <laughs> through it. It's a big <laughs> exposition, guys. So yeah, we're we're watching a flashback of a woman having her baby stolen by what we find out is a cult leader, satanic cult leader. Yeah. Yeah, and then he kills her too. Mm -hmm. Why does he kill her? He then right. Okay, is it later revealed that? He wants a blowjob and he Yay. tries to force her to give him a blowjob, mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah. then he doesn't get it up and she laughs a little bit and then he kills her. Is that what that was? No, he, she bites his... Uh... She bites his penis off. What? Yeah. yeah. That's been... It's, it was referenced many times yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Many yeah. times in the movie, Nicholas oh, Cage will be like... I wasn't listening to the dialogue. No, way. <laughs> I was listening to the movie. He I mean, killed the... my daughter because she bit his penis off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, it's, it's genuinely, yeah. <laughs> Multiple times. And he's really Are embarrassed. We sure That's why about this. I feel like they I'm, like call him Commander that. Nubbins, like yeah. half the movie. Like I mean, like yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That, that's why he shoots that guy in the church later because that he, that guy like mentions no, it a was, little. Oh, bit. is that yeah. why they keep saying Dickless? Now I get so yeah, much yeah, more. Okay. Dickless yeah. because it's. I thought they were just like using that over and over because whoever wrote this was like Dickless is the best put down. <laughs> I'm gonna say that a lot. <laughs> okay, but podcast listener, put yourself in our shoes who watched this movie. And apropos of nothing, see Nicolas Cage's face, then sepia tone, woman has her baby stolen, woman bites a dick off, woman has her throat slit, and the movie does not acknowledge what the fuck that was for another 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Very true. Very true. <laughs> and again, they're implying that Nick Cage would have been like just sitting off to the side doing nothing about this, watching, <laughs> because he's having the flashback. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. He gets yeah, to see I don't it think from they, hell. We will, but they, I don't think they explain it. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I, th I think I think what it is is that when you're... Because he kind of explains it later. It's like, I guess when you're in hell, there's TV, but there's only one channel, and it's yeah. bad things that happen to people you love. And that's yes. all you get to watch. Yeah. Oh, he's flashing back to a hell he's TV. Flash, that actually yeah. does yeah. make that, sense yeah. in the plot. Flashing back. <laughs> right. Yeah. He just <laughs> has to watch TV. all the times. Like, Shh, what's no, on? They totally tie up that loose end. They really uh, did. They really did. <laughs> They tucked all, all of it is all tucked in really well throughout the whole movie. Wow. <laughs> Mwah. Screenwriting 101. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so we cut out of the doodly do, and Nick Cage is like, sorry, I was on a vampire doodly do. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're just driving together. You want, uh, you like the windows up a little bit, or how do you like them? <laughs> You're like this radio station? Yeah. Also, by the way, my name is Milton. Mm. <laughs> like, like Paradise Lost. I don't know if you, if you know that John Milton. <laughs> It's pretty apt. It's terribly clever. Anyway, <laughs> it's not the only insult. Then, then Webster shows up, and they're just like literary references. And you're just like, no, <laughs> you didn't do anything with any of them. <laughs> just, you just know two names. <laughs> yep. That once wrote things, and you never. Uh. How amazing would it be though if Amber Heard had just been like, oh, yeah, wh what other things of John Milton do you know? <laughs> Nick Cage would have just been like, hats, hats, <laughs> <laughs> cereal. 
board game. Brad, it's Bradley. <laughs> Stupid. So, so they pull up to a bar called Bull by the Balls. And this is the first time that the movie will hint at the fact that Nick Cage is dead. Yeah. Because he'll walk in and some guy will be like, hey, I thought you were dead. And he's like, shush, shush, that's for later in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but they also have like a Jerry Seinfeld Newman moment where he looks up and he's like, Newman. Like there's that <laughs> moment, right? There's this I weird moment. Do. It's like when I when I open the door and Eli Bosnick is standing on, I'm just like, Jesus Christ, why are you here? <laughs> oh, there he is why again. are you here? <laughs> Buddy brunch. So they go into the bar and they sit down and <laughs> Nick Cage clearly demanded to be carded in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. She just cards him. And then not only does she card him, it's the weirdest scene because she cards him and he like kind of is like fucking really? And she's like, yeah, yeah we got to do it. It's a dry county. And he's like, oh, fine, fine. And they like kind of play this whole thing out. Then he pulls out a ye oldie driver's license because I guess when you're in hell, you get your wallet. License back. Yeah, you still. <laughs> and then when you leave, yeah, you got, absolutely. I don't know. Yeah, that's how and it works. And his fucking license is expired. And she's like, uh, I never cared in the first place. You're <laughs> like, why do we have that whole scene? <laughs> and it's like you said, it's big. But also getting indignant over that. Like, are you kidding me? When people card me, I'm fucking ecstatic. Yeah, I'm fucking 19 with a graying beard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you're Nick Cage, you look like a leather Muppet. You should be fucking excited. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm attracted to leather Muppets, apparently, according to the, the things I've said so far. <laughs> if you put together the puzzle pieces. <laughs> Also, the Newman guy shouts at him as they before they like be gone by dawn. Like, what? I can't get a late checkout. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? <laughs> dawn? Whose fucking checkout times are dawn? What the fuck? Okay, man? sir. Here's your key, and your checkout time is five fourteen a.m. It's five fourteen. I just I just put the key on a rooster. Here you go. Just take it to your room. It's gonna wake you up. Breakfast ends at three thirty three a.m. What does it mean? <laughs> You guys have is do you have little boxes of cereal? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the waitress flirts with Nick Cage, and Amber Heard has an amazing line here. She says, Come on, man. Nobody ever reaches the end and wishes they hadn't fucked so much. And I wrote in my notes, I'm pretty sure like John Holmes wished he hadn't <laughs> fucked so much. <laughs> he died of AIDS, everybody. He had the AIDS up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This untreated syphilis. Anyway, I <laughs> I could have laid off a little. I guess yeah. I could have laid off a little for sure. <laughs> Again, if you're wondering if incels didn't write this movie, imagine the dialogue that you imagine beautiful women would say if you never met a beautiful if woman you ever once. Talk to one. <laughs> ever. You no, know, I bet yes. beautiful women are like, somebody fuck me, please. That's probably what they say all the time. They're probably like, I just need a fucking all the time. <laughs> right? Let me write that down. That's good. That's good dialogue. I'm write just that never down. there. That's the problem. It's because I'm never there. Does anybody in this bar have a spare dick I could borrow? <laughs> Come on now. When Ben Shapiro is done practicing his nunchaku every morning and his wife lets him into the breakfast nook, this is what he writes for women to say. <laughs> Okay, so meanwhile, we cut back to abusive ex-boyfriend. He's talking to his mom on the phone. Oh, my God. Like a, Adorable conversation. Like a pussy. Says, I love you, mom, at the end, too. Yeah. Yes. I said I love you to my grandma on the phone recently, and she was like, all right, I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> it was so rough. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you're nice. <laughs> <laughs> love spending time on the phone with you. All right, that's <laughs> Grandma's got to go. What's that? Beep, beep. Oh, someone on to the other line. <laughs> weirdo. Little weirdo said he loved me. Can you believe that? <laughs> what, do you, what, do you want to fuck grandma? I'm not going to die and regret all this fucking. Get in here, guys. <laughs> you wish. You look like a white bishop. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Get a piece of this ass. <laughs> And then the accountant shows up and he is, uh, he's going to kill him. Yes. Yeah. He does. Which is, uh, which is pretty cool. He does. Well, he, hold on a minute. Cause he skewers him like a fucking grasshopper in a fucking high school biology bug collection against <laughs> yeah, the wall. He totally does. And the guy is like gently annoyed by it. He's <laughs> hanging. Yeah. This happens again and again. It's this guy who had an air conditioner dropped on his face a few minutes ago. Now has like a baseball bat impaling him to the wall. And like, I guess they hit a stud because it really stuck in. There. It really did this like, time. Yeah. It's going to leave a mark. 
and it's like hanging from there, but he seems unperturbed. He's like annoyed and he's arguing with the account. Like, <laughs> hey, like this is just, what are you going to fuck? <laughs> he's not screaming in unbelievable pain <laughs> at any point, <laughs> despite being off his feet and impaled. <laughs> And William Fickner is having so much goddamn fun with every moment in this scene. He's chewing this every piece of the scenery and every line. He, he's he got a, a baseball bat through this guy's shoulder and he's stuck to the wall and he's asking the guy questions and he's like, answer the, and then he picks up some other object and he like taps That's the other half of the, bat. the baseball bat in a little yeah. bit further. And he's like, answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so he kills the guy, and then uh, the cops show up. Now, these will be the accountant's henchmen for the rest of the movie. Yes. And they will be his henchmen. I was very confused by this. I feel like Finchner, like, improvised this, and they were like, fuck yeah, we're keeping it. He flips a coin, and it turns into an FBI badge. Yeah, what? And the cops look at that badge, and they're like, Okay, well, we'll follow yeah, you wherever you go you and kill Nick Cage on sight. Sure. Whatever yeah. you say. <laughs> Deleted scene from the movie right after he produces that, they he pulls some hankies out of one of the cops' nose. It's actually really <laughs> great. Yeah. He takes their hat off, pulls a rabbit. You know, he's got a whole routine. But they they just chose that one. Just yeah. the you know, one. It would have been kind of great if he like, held up the FBI badge and like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can't just go around murdering people. Though. <laughs> I don't right. think that's a... Your, I don't know. Like, that's a different department. I don't think it, like, works the way you think it works. <laughs> just, Ooh, seven of diamonds, though. It is. It is. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. He Never flips mind. the coin again. It's an NYPD badge. Okay, now you're allowed to yeah, just go around murdering people. Yeah. <laughs> but he better be black. Sorry we asked you. You're a white guy. I apologize. <laughs> we right. shouldn't even hassle you to start this whole thing <laughs> off. Our bad. There is a point, though, where one of the, he says to one of the cops, because he convinces them, because he one of them is supposed to be very ambitious, he says. You're ambitious, aren't you, young man? And that guy was like super ambitious or whatever and said, yes, we'll follow you wherever you want us to go, Mr. FBI agent, because I guess I'll get on the FBI then or something. I don't know. Anyway, he's getting <laughs> ready to leave. It. <laughs> and he says to him, he turns to him and he says, the time it takes to follow your protocols is the time it takes to end your life. And that was definitely in the Killology book that they give to all police officers. 100% <laughs> yeah. in that. That guy stole directly. it from this movie. If honestly, exactly. <laughs> if you told me United States police training was based on Drive Angry, yeah. I feel a lot better. <laughs> I'd agree. Yeah. So now we cut over to Amber Heard, who's getting hurt. Her nails done by the the waiter guy she picked up earlier. This is not a good scene. This whole scene. Her name's is not Piper, by the way. I don't know if the movie ever names her until Act Three. She, nope. Her name's Piper. I have that written down. He th that you learn her name like thirty eight minutes into this movie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. In case you were worried, there wasn't enough sex scene. As if to balance it out. Oh God. Nick Cage is having a... He's fully clothed while a woman has sex <laughs> on top of him. Yes. And he's smoking a cigar. Yeah. Nick Cage <laughs> very clearly fucks with this same exact lack of enthusiasm that he acts with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, just, exactly. He is just <laughs> sitting there with all of his clothes on and this woman is... Why? She is acting like his dick is a fucking magic rabbit. Just yeah. like, I have no <laughs> idea what that... Because he is unmoved and unmoving fully clothed, and that woman is on his junk, flipping out. One can only assume that his penis inside her is doing the, like, wacky inflatable tube man. <laughs> <laughs> Based on Actually, when reaction. you leave hell, you get your wallet back and an upgraded dick. They don't tell yeah. you that. It's a very, very <laughs> upgraded dick. But Amber, she sees a guy sneak by the window and decides to follow him. Why? Yeah. Fuck me. That's why. She yeah. follows him to the next scene, which is important. <laughs> yeah, some dude rooting around by bushes to go piss is not a big deal. Like, you yep. would just be like, yeah, I'm by a bar. That happens all the well, time. Well, she was probably like, wait a minute. Some shady looking character outside a dive bar. Well, I'm a woman alone. <laughs> I'll check it out. <laughs> There's no better person to take a look at this than me. <laughs> oh, wait. Look, look at that. On the back of his coat, it says, follow me for the plot. All right. I guess I'll follow him for the plot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And sure enough, he goes into the bar where bad guy, head bad guy, head Satanist. Bad guy. Yeah, yes. the uh, get my penis bit off in the flashback that didn't make any sense guy. Yeah, He's there evil monologuing. He explains that for some reason, and again, this movie doesn't make any fucking sense, but just so you can follow along, for some reason, head Satanist bad guy who Nick Cage is chasing 
has come to where Nick Cage is. <laughs> I know. Yes. <laughs> to tell his yes. hench people to kill Nick Cage. <laughs> yes. Feels like you could call that one out, right? Just send everyone a group text. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then they all show up. They're clearly in the South. They all show up and then they like all just have farm implements that they brought with them. Yeah, kill her farm implements. Yeah, yeah you couldn't best. find a gun to use in the South. Okay, <laughs> yeah, no, all right, that's fair. Yeah, And they clearly all had a long fight about like who gets which stupid yes, farm absolutely. weapon. absolutely, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One guy has a sledgehammer. <laughs> also, very briefly, is this like an old timey saloon that there's just hotel rooms attached to the bar? Like, that's not yeah. That's not a thing anymore. Like that, no. I've never been to a bar that also has hotel attached to it, unless I was in a Wild West ghost town. <laughs> yeah. In the town where he grew up. Yeah, I'm sleeping at the bar tonight, honey. I'm just gonna sleep at the bar. <laughs> this is the test for Westworld. It didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> so we we cut back to Nick Cage. He's fucking with his clothes on like Heath Enright, <laughs> and the lady's like, "Hey, why are you wearing your clothes like Heath Enright while he has sex?" <laughs> and Nick Cage says, I never disrobe before a gunfight. Yeah. Now, look, he's about to have a gunfight. So that sentence makes sense. In half a second. But literally only in this context. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, which you just have to point out what that means here is that he's fucking this woman, even though he knows he's about to have a gunfight. So he's like, I don't care what happens to you. Yeah. We'll fuck a little. I'm not even into it. This will be traumatizing. <laughs> like, why, why would you, if you know about, why would you expect yeah. you should leave? I'm going to have a gunfight. <laughs> yeah, my dick is a PTSD wand. Don't worry. Yeah. Well, he's not going to stop the fucking. Yeah, no. Or the, or the smoking the but cigar. But he doesn't look like he's into the fucking either. Or drinking he's like, no his whiskey getting... out of the bottle. They have yeah. a gunfight during which that is all happening. He remains in the process of having sex with this woman. And what's amazing about this is you can see what they were going for with the movie, right? They were like, and yeah, man, right? Ben Shapiro puts his nunchakus away <laughs> under his doctor wife's bed, <laughs> wherever she keeps them. And then he was like, then he has a sexy gunfighty, drinky, smoky, except Nick Cage is 47 years old. So instead of like rolling around and humping, he just sort of gently waddles about with his <laughs> hypothetical penis still in this woman and gently points guns without twisting too quickly so he doesn't throw out his back. <laughs> Have you ever lowered an old man into a car and realized that you should probably just leave him under the tires? That's how Nick Cage <laughs> does this gunfight. <laughs> Okay, but it's a pretty sweet gunfight. Like, I love this scene. <laughs> the, I love dumbest. the fucking scene. He literally at one point, so remember, the guys have stupid weapons. One guy actually has a machete. This is my favorite part which, of the whole that's movie. Probably the best this weapon. This is my favorite part of the whole movie. Oh my God. Of all the weapons. One guy has like a little yeah. trowel. One guy has just a bucket of dirt. <laughs> a stud finder. <laughs> stud fi yeah, right. <laughs> but machete guy comes He's in. He's got to make the dad joke where he points it at himself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's me again. Oh, <laughs> <we're> like, <laughs> beep, 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 beep. oh, it's too close to me. It's too close to me. Uh, He's a stud. <laughs> if you can hold one of those without making that joke, you own a Home Depot. It's physically impossible. Nobody can do it, so you're fine. <laughs> but Machete Guy finally comes in. Nick Cage does a very slow, like Eli mentioned, behind the back twisty without quite hurting himself gunshot. <laughs> and it shoots the machete the guy is holding backwards and the blade of the machete lodges into that guy's face. <laughs> yes, backwards. And not mm -hmm. even the sharp part. No. It's the it's the it's the <laughs> flat part of the blade goes right into his skull. It's awesome. Oh my god. If if the Boondock Saints had Nick Cage, imagine Ooh. how much better that could be. Oh. And less <laughs> racial slurs as we learned. Earlier. I guess more importantly, the racial slurs, but just, you know, assume I already meant that. It's brought up a lot of feelings. <laughs> so, so he kills all the bad guys, but who should show up? But the accountant and his cop henchmen. That's right. And there's this fucking great moment because earlier we've seen that Satanist leader guy is wanted for Sataning. Right. And the cops pull up with the accountant and just by the nature of like them jamming all these characters unnecessarily into the same set piece, Satanist guy walks by and the cops have this amazing moment where they turn to the accountant who is mind controlling them. And they're like, 
hey, can we stop real quick and arrest him? He's actually a Satanist cult leader who's doing a bunch of... No, no, okay, we're here to kill Nick King. No, we're yeah, here to kill Nick King. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel stupid for even mentioning it. You know what? I'm ambitious. I should remember. You're ambitious. Yeah. You're ambitious. You're ambitious. <laughs> It's like me trying to get <laughs> Cecil to pull over for the world's biggest ball of string. He's, come on! <laughs> get in, take a picture, get out again. Nah, it's fine. Although, admittedly, height of realism in the very next piece of this, when they open fire on Nick Cage and Amber Heard, and then they say freeze. That is the height of realism. <laughs> yeah, exactly. they, they tell them to stop after they started shooting. And I think that that's, again, police protocol. Like you said earlier. You know, yeah, they yeah. just give out a DVD copy of this movie. It's obvious. <laughs> it's a handbook. Now. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it was after this scene that my wife literally looked over at me and said, I had a colonoscopy earlier today, and that was the best part of my afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <sighs> this is also where Piper kills one of the cops with a gun. Yes. Yeah. And seems very unfazed by that. Like just, <laughs> yeah, that's sometimes it happens. I have no idea. Like we, we don't even explain later. She's just like, yeah, I guess I'm on the shooting cops team. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> Piper is weirdly murderously loyal to a hitchhiker. She just met 43 minutes ago. She's cop murder loyal. Yeah. <laughs> that is, yeah. yeah. Well, that I mean, is, he, wow. He did kick her boyfriend in the face. So, you know, right, literally sure. ride and die. So you know one cop murder. Yep. You knew she was going to be golden retriever loyal from the moment you saw her. I mean, you knew she was going to be right next to him the whole time. <laughs> right. So they, they kill the cops and then they drive away together. But as they're driving, out, as they're driving out of the hotel. Oh, God. The accountant walks back out of the, of the bar where he was like, sniffing for Nick Cage and not participating in the gunfight happening inches away from him. He walks back out and Nick Cage is just like, don't make eye contact with the demon accountant. Don't make eye contact. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at him. I'm looking at him. This is no good. But it's William Fickner. I get it. God, he's so good. <laughs> <laughs> but what I love about it is he makes this hard eye contact and William Fickner, again, because he's doing this entire performance ironically, looks at him like, why are you in this scene? Why am I in this scene? <laughs> what? What? Why is this Nick, scene? Nick, slow down the car. What's happening in the movie? Am I chasing you? Why aren't I chasing you? Someone get the AD over here. I need to talk to somebody about this. <laughs> also, it's at this point that you realize that Nick Cage, uh, the hitchhiker, has just, that's just his car now. Like, he has just taken her car and she's just like, yeah, whatever. If I guess I'm just here to be here i don't know and he just that's just that's just his car now he just that's nick cage's car he's gonna break for pussy that's it yep. <laughs> that's right that is his car until until we downgrade to a much worse car in the finale. <laughs> we'll get there well point being i just locked eyes with william fickner for a little bit there while i was watching so i'm gonna need a quick break and then we'll be back with more drive angry but captain robin Berry, I can't love you. I'm a Shropshire, and you're a Montalbum. Don't you think I know that? Boring. Next. And I'm David Tennant, trying to play not Doctor Who. Hello, David Tennant, playing not Doctor Who. You remind me of Doctor Who. Boo. No, next. Next. Hey, Cecil, have you seen my, um, hey, what are Eli and Heath doing here? Also, what do I mean by here? We don't even live together. Oh, what? you uh, you do in the podcast verse. Yeah, it's it just it's best not to think about it, Tom. Okay. Well then, well then, what are you guys doing here? Well, Tom, I'm all, I'm all out of good TV to watch, so Eli and Heath are acting out my favorite British shows and movies for me. Yeah, why don't you just try Acorn TV? Wait, what's an Acorn TV? Gr oh, seriously? Oh. Now we have to put Cecil on the board. Yeah, really? We, yes, we do. This is spinning out of control. You're telling, it's, you're telling me. I said, what's Acorn TV, Tom? Okay. Right, right. Acorn TV is a streaming service that's rooted in British television. It has a rich catalog of exclusive, award-winning series across genres, including mysteries, dramas, comedies, and so much more. From production to performances, the series you'll find on Acorn TV are exceptional because they're cleverly written, visually striking, and feature renowned actors like David Tennant and Thandi Newton. See? David Tennant. Told you. Plus, with Acorn TV, you get thousands of hours of new, refreshing content for a fraction of the cost compared to most streaming services. It's just $5.99 a month. Can I watch it anywhere? Pretty much. I use it on my Apple TV to watch one of my favorite comedy shows of all time, Slings and Arrows. Okay. All right. I'll 
How do I give it a try? All right. Escape to Britain and beyond without leaving your seat. Try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use the promo code AWFUL. That's A-C-O-R-N dot T-V code AWFUL to get your first 30 days for free. You know what? I'm in. Thanks, Tom. Now, you want some popcorn? They're about to do some obscure medical drama that doesn't make sense in America. Oh, I love that one. But Barrister, this man hasn't been in Parliament since the midterm post-election reformation. It's not possible. I don't get that. Me either. End of the line, Milton. I'm here to bring you back. You know I can't let you do that. I have a job to do. So do I. That's why they call me the accountant. Wait, what? The accountant. They call me the accountant. But why? Because I go uh, get people who escape from hell. That's not what an accountant does. But it, it's not? Nope. Accountants like tally numbers and fill out tax forms. Are, are you maybe called the bounty hunter? Or, what? You, you, no, no, no. That's stupid. Hey, don't look at me. I'm not the one who just made up a name for my job. Why don't you just call yourself the plumber? That makes sense. You know what? Of... Let's just get you back to hell. Go, yeah, go down. Whatever you say, the plumber. And we're back. They're uh, driving away at this point with some sort of emotion, perhaps. It's not clear. Maybe angry. I don't know. Mm, never buy angry. <laughs> you should never drive away. And now it's time to explain the plot to Piper. So... So that she knows why she just killed a cop for a hitchhiker that she doesn't know. (laughs) Yeah. And he explains what we explained to you earlier in the movie, that the flashback we saw earlier was the Satanist cult leader killing his daughter and stealing her baby. Yes. Which does not make this movie less terrifying, right? Because at this point, I'm way past the dick biting off flashback. I'm still wondering about the fuck slash gun fight that I had to watch. <laughs> but there's a stolen baby, so it's an Amber Heard alert. Which is oh. good. <laughs> right? I literally have the same joke. Do you have the same joke? <laughs> same joke. <laughs> same joke. Oh. If you'd like to purchase your Amber Heard alert t-shirt, you know what? I heard it. I no. heard it. Yep. You we just, can't sell that we're shirt. We're just going <laughs> to... Nope. Hard cancel. Diesel has made the Amber Heard joke that we here at Puzzle and the Thunderstorm would like to be making. <laughs> yeah, so, so Nick Cage explained, after she's like, so I feel like I'm going to get in trouble for killing a cop now. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're super slow on that. I can't believe you even did that. But uh, let me catch you up on the plot. Demons killed my daughter and they took her baby. I'm getting her back. You're also here. That's the plot. (laughs) What would you say I do here? It's Amber (laughs) scary. We'll never be clear. But just as he finishes explaining what it is she does here, who should show up? But the accountant. (laughs) He, does, he chases them over a bridge. He chases which them over a bridge. Drive over and have a very polite conversation in the middle of. <laughs> oh, it's the best. He pull, he pulls up next to him and he does like a super chill roll down the window <laughs> gesture. Yeah. <laughs> and Nick Cage is like, Amber Heard, get the uh big gun in the back of my car that says <laughs> God killer on the side yeah, of it. Yeah. And I have to do a thing. I don't know why I don't just use that. I don't know why I'm carrying that with me. All the time when I saw the account, it looks like a Nerf gun wrapped in electrical tape. Totally does look like a Nerf gun. Hundred percent. It does like not look gun. intimidating at all. 100%. God, it's, it's like God just took the it's Nerf or nothing to like an extra yeah. fucking level. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's a hundred percent steampunk cosplay gun. That's exactly yep. what it is. Yeah, yep. made out of a refuse Nerf gun. That's exactly what somebody somebody got out their old timey <laughs> paints. Yeah, but it's got badass misspelled improper grammar Latin on it. (laughs) (laughs) So on the side of the gun is written Deus Velux Nex. On the side of the bullet, yeah. On the side of the bullet, right, okay. And that translates You didn't see that in 3D when it came right into your face? In 3D? In awesome 3D? Wait, did you not watch this wearing your 3D glasses, Eli? Oh, see, that's the problem. That's how you, yeah, right. My blender's 3D glasses now available. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if that ad has aired yet So that might be nonsensical But that translates that Latin When you put it into Google Translate as God 
Nope and nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't mean swift and violent death of God? Mm, no. <laughs> okay. Somebody on IMDb was pretty sure that's what it meant. Okay. I have no idea. Nick Cage was pretty sure that yeah, okay. <laughs> it started an IMDb account and was like, there we go. Right, so he shoots the God killer at the accountant and just barely misses because the accountant has... Super speed, I guess. Yes. Yep. Super, yeah. Super well, he's speed, also yes. in the Matrix. He just matrixed it. Okay. He matrixed yeah, it out right. of the way. Yeah. And then they continue their like way too casual conversation over the PA. So William Fickner, the accountant, gets on. He's in a cop car somehow. And he gets on the like PA that has the megaphone yeah, yeah, yeah. blasting out of it. And then he has a conversation with Nick Cage, who does not have a PA, which <laughs> makes it kind of confusing. But I love the tone of every conversation matches nothing about the action. The two of them are just like having a nice fun. I feel like I feel like William Fickner was trying to have a Nick Cage duel with Nick Cage. He just decided to like talk and act like Nick Cage to Nick Cage and Cage doesn't quite realize what's happening yet until way later in the movie and then they get to really cage battle each other. It's pretty great. Mhm. Mm yeah, there's this great moment where he's like, come on, you know, you got to come back, Milton. Milton, you know, you got to come back. And he's like, no, I've got something to do. I've got something to do. <laughs> and it's, again, the action beat here is like, oh, all right, you've given me no choice. But again, because it's Nick Cage, he's just like, all right, fair enough. I guess I'll crash my brain, my car off the side <laughs> of the <brain." laughs> Well, when he crashes, too, it does that John claude Van Damme. From four angles where it's like boom and it flips and then it boom and it flips and then it boom. And then you're like, didn't it flip like three times already? What is happening here? Oh, yeah. The, the, the car does a handspring off this yeah. bridge. Actually, right? <laughs> Sticks, Sticks the landing. The landing. Looks yeah. good Throws like a tire, two tires up in yeah. triumphant celebration. Bella Caroli carries the car away all <laughs> proud. Russian judge. Russian judge gives it a six. It's like ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. It turns into a giant police badge. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's time to meet the captain. And if you're wondering who, so is the fucking movie. They're now going to introduce like a police captain who will be in two scenes, not dressed as a cop, and will just bark <laughs> random cop orders without so ever having joke. any effect on the it's film. So <laughs> it's like a random AARP member just wandered into the set and they're like, I don't know, just give him some lines. See what he does. Let's see him. Go ahead. Moon's over my hammy. <laughs> yeah, Wait, can... what? I don't think you're supposed to. You're not where you're supposed to be. I, th this guy is so irrelevant until you just brought him up. I forgot about him and I didn't make any <laughs> notes about him at all. I have seven pages of notes and he didn't make the cut. Nope. What I like about this whole par portion is that he goes up and he's, you know, he's just, he's a gr gruff old crime boss, crime captain, whatever, police captain. He walks up and he, he's telling everybody what to do. And then they find that girl. Oh, yes. And that girl is just, she's just blubbering. She's the girl. Well, yeah, this the, is the, the girl. waitress that, that Nick Cage was fucking during a yeah, gunfight. Yeah, gun yeah. fucking. When he was, when he was shooting and, and grind dancing with her or whatever, when he was doing that whole scene, that woman is now an absolute wreck. Just, she's got mascara running down her face. She's screaming, crying the whole time. And she says something like, that's never happened to me before. Yeah, thinking, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Now you're going to score like a fucking 18 out of 20 on that Facebook naughty test now. Gosh, <laughs> dude, you're fucked. Here's my favorite part about that. She says, yeah, so a guy won a gunfight while I was fucking him. Did that ever happen to you? Yeah. <laughs> to this cop. And literally, we, we watched the cop begin to answer and then they cut the scene and I was furious <laughs> how badly did you want a flashback though to nick cage fucking that cop <laughs> in a gunfight they both have all their clothes on though the whole time so yeah, exactly. <laughs> i wish i could quit you so uh two potheads find oh, the accountant this, oh yeah yeah he tells them that they're going to die and then no no hold on hold on <laughs> hold on you're skipping the ver my favorite part of this whole movie is he kicks the face in this fucking wreck of a car and the two potheads walk up to it and the door of this car is kicked off with so much force that it flies, nails one of the potheads and throws this dude like 10 yards back. A car door weighs about 150 pounds. So this 150 pound chunk of steel barrels into this pothead. The dude stands up and he's like, 
Whoa, you could have killed me. <laughs> hey, bro, No, I evidently could not yeah. have killed you. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally nothing I could do other than hurl a 150-pound car door at speed at your chest and be like, man, brush, brush, brush. <laughs> that stung a little. Oh, man, you crushed my hacky sack. <laughs> He's got a hacky sack in his breast pocket. He pulls it out. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I knew it. So Nick Cage is backstorying some more about how his daughter got involved in the cult and tried to get out of the cult. And wouldn't you know it, just as he's saying it, they spot the cult's bad guy van. What bad mm -hmm. guy van, you ask? Good fucking question. Because <laughs> this is the <laughs> first time in the movie it'll be introduced. But luckily, Nick Cage recognizes it from having read the script to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is also where we get one of the best Nick Cage sentences where he cages it up. It's so exciting to like to try to guess the word that he's going to cage it up on. <laughs> so he's explaining to Amber Heard what's going on. He's like, yeah. You know, this cult leader talked my daughter into it. He talked about quiet revolution. And it was four months before she realized that quiet meant living in a basement. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. But then he doesn't do it later. Like some sentences, he just leaves. There's no cage word. Yeah, yeah it's there's no cage word. No. <laughs> Keeps you on your toes. There's, yeah, there's no tracking Nick's cage. He's, he's always <laughs> one step ahead of us. Sometimes he pump fakes it and he'll be like, Qua! and then just keeps talking yeah, normal. Exactly. <laughs> <The best. laughs> So he sees the bad guy van and heads into the church yeah, yeah. Oh God. that the van is out front of. Yeah, where they're having the, the CPAC national anthem tryouts in there. <laughs> <laughs> that church is amazing. The picture of Jesus on the wall. There's a picture of like scary Jesus that I guess they must have had like custom made for scary Satan church somewhere. I like yeah. they're on Etsy just like, no. No. Oh, that's the one for <laughs> yeah, scary gotta, Satan church. Gotta get on Etsy. Absolutely. What is Jesus's role in Satanism, the religion? Does he matter? <laughs> no. These know. are good questions. Is he the enemy in the way that Satan is the enemy of the Jesus thing? Because he's just like the son of like, not the God they worship. He's just like some guy's son. <laughs> yeah, some rando. Yeah. He's just like Joe Biden's Jared Kushner is all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. He gets about four steps into this church and then everyone, and I do mean everyone, pulls a gun on him. Now, here is a bit of an issue. Mm. Nick Cage, we will learn, is immortal and bulletproof. However, he does freeze when they all point these guns at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It hurts still. Yeah. But he can't be killed. And it could yeah. pause. It like puts him on pause for a few minutes. It like yeah. it just pauses him and then they walk away and then he unpauses himself later on. I think that's it's like it looking at the ghost in Mario. Yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Speaking of which, this is where Nick Cage announces that his penis has been bitten off. So he shoots one someone of his else. henchmen for <laughs> yeah. someone else. Yeah, he shoots a guy because he thinks he told somebody. Yes. How dare you? How dare you tell someone my penis is a half a penis? <laughs> Dude, dude, I told you that in confidence. I really wanted Man. someone else in the church to be like, you know, we might not have believed him until you shot the guy he blamed for killing. <laughs> ah, we'll talk about it later. I don't want to. You can't trust any of these Satanists. <laughs> and then he explains that his cane is Nick Cage's daughter's leg bone. That is, yes. Yeah. Oh, God. Seems like a weird souvenir, but who am I yeah. to judge? <laughs> Shoots Nick Cage, we believe, dead. Yes. And then kidnaps the baby, which he already has, and Amber Heard, because I, I can only assume she is in the movie. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's the reason everything that happens to Amber Heard happens. Yeah. But the baby's there so they can, like, sacrifice the baby to win the Satan thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 When they kidnap her... They have an extended kidnapping scene where she fights and kicks and all that before they pile into her 1988 Jayco Sunbird RV. Like that's that's the scary. Yeah. That's the Satanist. <laughs> we're like, we got to get something that really says evil. 
What what would be good for a car chase? <laughs> Get a really old RV. Yeah. You want to use my grandma and grandpa's retirement old? Fun? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Why don't we just drive to Yellowstone afterwards too? <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta have something I can pee in. You know, all right, yeah. yeah. Just a Satan cult going into a Walmart after they park for free. On the <laughs> it's close enough of the Satan cult with the RV. <laughs> also, Amber Heard. Fights way too hard and way too unchoreographed. So the Satanists have this moment where they're like, Yeah, get her in the van. And she's like, Kick it, kick, kick, kick. And they're like, All right, well, wait for the actress Amber Heard to stop kicking. <laughs> <laughs> and you see her be like, Oh, too much kickity kick. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm in the van. I'm in the van. <laughs> stairs, stairs. Okay. I'm in the van. So now the left behind bad guys are going to bury Nick Cage. But what's this? He's alive! Dude has the fakest wig I've ever seen on a human being. <laughs> oh. He's wearing, he's wearing, they show this dude come out. He's got this fucking totally oh. 100 million percent fake wig. It looks like he killed Cindy Jacobs, the prophet, and took her hair. Like as a pelt, <laughs> like as a trophy, and he's wearing it around. That's what he looks. He looks like Karen. He looks like they dressed him up to play a Karen in a movie. That's what he looks like. <laughs> he looks like someone stole Richard Simmons Merkin. And <laughs> like, they were like, we're getting our money's worth out of this. Yeah, that's exactly it. <sighs> Who's the character from Monster? The the like the real life character Charlize that Monster Theron. was based on? Yeah. Charlie's Theron. Yeah. He's got he's got like a Charlie's Theron in Monster mullet going. Yeah. On. <laughs> yeah, he gets shot in the eye and then he stands up. Afterwards, mm -hmm. yeah, he's fine here. Yeah, he's yeah. totally so fine. have another gunfight. What are the rules? Pause. What are the rules? Pause. According to this movie, once you go to hell, you can't get killed on Earth. I guess that's yeah. The I, but you can get like hurt, unconsciousified yeah. on Earth. Like what? <laughs> just I, I, I literally wrote down. Nick Cage is now not dead, but I guess he was dead before. So I guess you can hurt him, but he wasn't really dead. But he was dead for a little while, but not permanently <laughs> dead. His eye seems gone, but probably not. I, so I suppose when you leave hell, you're like Wolverine with love handles and the need for an easy paycheck. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so Tom, I don't Tom know. wrote down the that's rules. A, that's Those exactly yeah. the rules. That yeah. It's funny because Nick Cage actually in this movie takes way more damage and, and acts way more hurt from things than guys that get like a fucking air conditioner dropped on their face. <laughs> like that dude was fine. This like... Let me tell you, you want to get your eye shot out of your head, get a fucking an air conditioner dropped on your head. It's going to shoot an eye out of your head. <laughs> to be fair, that air conditioner thing was just special effects. Nicolas Cage really did have to stand up from the floor. So that, you yeah. know, that <laughs> <laughs> nothing to lean on. So yeah, he kills the bad guys there in the church. Yes. And now it's time for him to catch up with the bad guy RV. And I really, really wanted it to cut to the inside of the RV and they're all having a ferocious argument about whether or not it's okay to poop in the RV. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's absolutely not. You Who's saying poop yes in the to RV? That. Yeah. I do. You poop That's in a, the RV. It's if an it, emergency never, poop only. Oh emergency God. poops only. Every, Every poop, poop for Eli is an emergency, emergency. Thank poop. You, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. You pull over and you drive away and Eli figures it out. <laughs> if you'd like to buy your Every Poop is an Emergency t-shirt, <laughs> um, we'd like to apologize in advance that it has a picture of Amber Heard on it. <laughs> we got our signals crossed. <laughs> this section of the podcast brought to you by Tushy. If you have an emergency poop, <laughs> Tushy. <laughs> Yeah, I like that there's speed away in there. Driving house. Yeah, wait. <laughs> gonna get away in this driving house. Don't worry, guys. We'll lose him in our driving house. <laughs> Zero to 60 in eventually. <laughs> oh. Yep. But they do realize, hey, what if we drive into this abandoned warehouse that has roads inside? Absolutely. <laughs> Maybe we can have a scene there. Get a lot of mileage out of that in this movie. Yeah, also... This car chase, I do want to point out the car chase between the 1969 Charger and the Ford Econoline Sunbird RV. <laughs> it ends because the 69 Charger just breaks down. Yep. Yeah, because it gets shot a bunch of times. So then the other car drives away. Mm -hmm. But they were chasing the guy they just drove away from yes well, they were earlier they forget they forget Why? so many times <laughs> what directions they're going very <laughs> much so yes. normally a car chase you would assume would be everybody going in the same direction so there's the chaser <laughs> in front the chasey behind and they go to the right for example but they forgot and <laughs> they have 
that that's how that would work. Yes. And like half the car chase, they're going in opposite directions like a joust or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. guns instead of a joust. He winds up in front of them. Stick. Yeah, for some right. What's that reason. called? The cultists Lance? are like, we're going to kill you, but not if you stop. Yeah. And then we'll drive <laughs> away. That's it. And just. All right, we didn't think about that. We we can only go. We have to go fifty miles an hour when this thing blows up. <laughs> Admittedly, that fucking RV though, I would drive across country in that upper bunk, looking out that front window. That would be the best. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be the best. I would lay on my tummy the whole time and just like this <laughs> with my hands and just stare out the front window. Oh gosh! Just as soon as COVID is over, Cecil, you and me, <laughs> we're gonna take this country by storm. We see the world's biggest ball of string. We'll visit Heath. Maybe Cecil's going to have an ejection button on that bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Eli's going to fly out with a parachute no, on it. No, Cecil was pro-pooping in the bathroom. Thank you. <laughs> Only for emer... Okay, forget Everything's it. Everything's an emergency. <laughs> Thank you. So now they're pushing the car because it's broken. They got to push it really far, though. Like, really, <laughs> like, they, they there's like four scenes, cuts, where they push in this car. And they're playing a song. Like, they, yeah. they did a montage of this car pushing scene. They're really in it. They did before the pushing. They did pause for a second so he could look at the engine that was riddled with bullets. Like, well, maybe I got to twist my wrist at it a little. Yeah. Like the bullet. <laughs> did you press the on button? That's <laughs> <laughs> full of bullet holes. No, the bullets got the on button on this Oh, the one. bullets okay. hit the, it, That's okay. why it shut off. Uh, uh, maybe it just got shot in the eye, yeah, so it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this scene, this contains the most important written line in... Literary history. Amber Heard is describing how UFOs aren't real, but oh right, she 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 dove into Nick Cage's car out of the RV. That's why she's back. Oh with yeah, him, yeah, 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 right. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Don't forget yeah. that. It's oh yeah, that's stupid. very. Amber Heard is describing that UFOs aren't real. She doesn't believe in Bigfoot, but devils and demons are real, and that real quote turns my shit white. Mm. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> what? <laughs> Up until the movie Drive Angry, had you heard the expression turns my shit white? <laughs> and if the answer like me is no, why did someone invent that phrase for this movie? Yeah. <laughs> the whole time I'm just like, go to a doctor. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Somebody's like, okay, you know what I like to imagine? Pretty girls pooping. Wait, why are you writing the script, Jerry? No, no. That's no, a weird it, thing to write no, but, down. No, but hear, hear me out. It's like nougat when it comes out. It's like, <laughs> oh. really, it's like silky smooth nougat. It's like there's corn Wait, and what, peanuts. what color nougat? And it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm going white on this one. White I don't know what nougat. You, it, white wow. nougat, right? A bit, like, a bit like when a girl poops, she could change... Like the color to match her mood, right? Yeah. That's how girls are. It's like a period. I think I met a girl. <laughs> my wife, who's the doctor, won't give me my nunchaku back. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you'd like your t-shirt of Amber Heard shitting nougat into Heath's open mouth, um, not only can we not sell you one, we are in deep legal trouble. Over. So please stop asking. Please. <laughs> We just want a little piece. We just want to make it through the day. So yeah, he's here for daughter venge and then a tow truck. Yeah, Deus Ex tow truck. Oh. Shows Deus Ex tow it, truck. Is, yeah. <laughs> so they don't have to push anymore. There's no more montage scenes of us pushing, Thank guys. God. There's a tow truck out of nowhere. And the tow truck driver was his best. I'm going to spoil this for you just so everyone understands how fucking stupid this movie is. Ugh. Was his best friend and... His co-criminal. Yeah, yeah, which this is the scene where you find out why Nick Cage went to hell in the first place. And it was because he was a bad dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's it. That's the policy. You're wondering, because Nick Cage is the moral center of this movie, but he comes from hell. So one would assume that that has that tension must at some point be resolved. Oh, no. Interesting. <laughs> oh, no. See, I would argue that the accountant is the moral center of the movie. He's, he's, he's all about order and logic and rules, and he's keeping things together, and he's the best actor. <laughs> okay, yeah, actually, you win that. You win that fight. You win that fight. You win that. Yeah. You win that. One. And he helped that lady with the trash. So oh, that's it. Yeah. The Heath right? and Wright School of Criticism. William Finchner is the center of whatever movie. <laughs> <laughs> he is the accountant of hell, and I believe he is the moral center of this movie. That's correct. That's right. 
But yeah, now we've met Webster. Webster is the name of the truck guy, by the Jesus. way. Yes, yes. The good Milton for you Webster, remembering Milton's this friend. character's name. <laughs> yeah, Webster. And Web Webster knows that he's back from the dead. They mentioned that for a second. And, uh, you know, now we've met a very important character for Act 3 in Webster. Or did we? We'll find out <laughs> that the answer is actually go fuck yourself when we come back for the big climax of Drive Angry that will not involve Webster. Satan! Yes, Minion. What is it? It's Milton. He's escaped. What? How? Well, he stole your car and your gun, and he's off to save his granddaughter. Whoa, 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 slow down. So many questions. Why do I have a car? Um, I mean, we're getting around hell, I guess. I, huh? no, no, no. I have to physically travel, like drive a car around in hell. Yes, I think that would, yes, I, it would seem so, yes. Well, okay, more, more quote. What did I do before I had the car? Was there a bus? Did I take the I, hell I'm, bus? I'm just the messenger. I have no idea. Okay. Also, uh, you mentioned a gun. What, why would well, I have a gun? Okay. Well, it, sir, that's the special gun that kills immortal beings and makes the soul go into oblivion in a big sort of black hole type. Right. Thing. Okay. Yeah, admittedly, that is better than just having like like a handgun in a safe right. below the bed like a scared suburbanite. But, you know, why would I, Satan, Prince of Darkness... Need an angel killing oblivion gun. I don't know what I'd do with Maybe it. Maybe it. Okay, well, let's 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 see. Maybe it's for like really bad souls who escape. I guess. I'm yeah, like the way that spitballing Milton just did. Exactly, just like him. Yes, with that gun. Ooh, yep, with the gun. Yep. This movie is really stupid. It is very stupid. Yes. They look cool, right? So cool. Absolutely. Hey, so Tom. Cool. Hey, Cecil. Whoa. Those are new. Yeah, man. You like them? Yeah, we, we got them over at Sunglasses Barn. Ah, uh, yeah. They, uh. Uh, he, they, have you seen my yikes? Tom, you, you look like an undercover cop right now. What? No. No. They just make me look cool. No. No. <sighs> they make you look like an undercover cop. This is, this is okay, cool. maybe. But the, mine look cool, right? Uh, you, you kind of look like a cyberpunk detective. Well, that's cool. Uh, you didn't let me finish. Cyberpunk detective who solves crimes at like an old country buffet. Yes. Oh, I see. Right? Okay. Look, yeah, guys, nice. if you want cool and affordable eyewear, why don't you try Blenders? What's Blenders? Tom, too? Seriously? We're, we're running out of space on the board. I know. Now Tom's in. We I, are, I know we're giving him a call. I know. Blenders is an adventurous mid-priced eyewear option with the same cool factor as other leading styles. Wait, really? Really. I actually got a pair of the weekend flyers, and they're great for when I'm longboarding around town or taking a trip to the beach, all the stuff that I normally do. Yeah, and unlike expensive big brand shades that you probably lost or smashed in the past, blenders are actually affordable, so you're not going to cry as much when the inevitable happens. Plus, Blender's team of in-house designers are constantly coming up with new styles, from orange polarized wraparounds, tortoise shell frames with purple lenses, to classic gold arms on black lens. And it's not just sunglasses. Blenders has prescription glasses, readers, and blue lights, as well as a snow collection with goggles and accessories. My, that does sound cool. It is. And if you want to get 15% off your Blenders purchase, just visit BlendersEyewear.com and enter the promo code AWFULVIP. That's BlendersEyewear.com, code AWFULVIP for 15% off. Blenders, rocked with pride worldwide. Now let's get those off you and get you guys some blenders. I really look like an undercover cop. Yeah, but like a bad one. Yeah, unsuccessful. Like a very you, unsuccessful you undercover caught. cop. <laughs> and we're back. And we're at Webster's Act 3 Supply <laughs> Shop. <laughs> where Nicolas Cage yeah. is looking in a mirror and trying to beat himself at acting, which is <laughs> so fucking fun. I could watch hours of this. Oh, they, they managed to get about four tenths of a second where Nick Cage doesn't scream, you're in Moonstruck. You're in Moonstruck. <laughs> <laughs> they're in a workyard, the same workyard where they had the car chase earlier. No, they're not. Of course not. But they are in the same, <laughs> it's the same workyard. It's the same workyard. <laughs> 
Right. And Amber Heard's like, hey, Webster, can you, um, I don't know, explain the plot. The audience, I think, got it, but I missed it. They, I'm just <laughs> yeah. in the movie, but they don't tell Speed me anything. brief. Do it in like two paragraphs. Can you just do it in two paragraphs? Thank you. So he explains that Nick Cage was a good father, but a bad husband. I, I have questions about how that works. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason he died is, and almost exact quote, these guys wanted to kill us, so... He went and he killed them first, but then they killed him. <laughs> so they couldn't kill me. It's pretty much it. Yeah. Kill. kill. <laughs> just, I want to point out, this is where Nick Cage gives the fire barrel monologue. Yes. About how he watched TV in hell. And this monologue is very important to me because... It was my audition monologue for many, many years. No, it absolutely was not. Yes, it was. I used to say, Get I will be doing out of here. a monologue from the greatest movie of 2011, Drive Angry 3D, starring Nicholas Cage. <laughs> this is entitled, Why Am I Staring at a Fire Barrel? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you auditioned for parts by doing this monologue from Nick Cage. No, 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 no. He then right. I was cast in parts by doing this Are you monologue. serious right now? Why would you not cast a guy crazy enough to do a Nick Cage monologue <laughs> from a 3D movie? <laughs> People had no choice but to cast You know what? Him. Movies are cheap to make. Let's take a risk on this guy. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Fun fact, Eli was actually in Drive Angry. Yeah. A, I am Nick Cage. So he got that part. Uh, He's the guy who taught the guy who catches the coin how to do that trick. Yeah, exactly. He taught him how to do that. Yeah. Okay, now turn it into an FBI badge. <laughs> and you can be in the credits. <laughs> Smoking aces. You can have your leg next to Aquafina. <laughs> she was very nice. Eli was in Ocean's 8 for real. I was for a quarter of a second. He got quarter quarter of a his second. leg that he cheated out into the show. Yeah, you'd have been in for a whole second if you'd used something else to audition with. No. I feel like that really won Aquafina over. Gonna agree to disagree. <laughs> but yeah, this in this monologue, which is masterful and everyone should watch it, Nick Cage says that Repeat it word for word for us. I here's the crazy, sad darkness. I desperately You just got caught in a lie. Tried to find <laughs> the text of this monologue yeah. so that I could lie. redo it. And yeah. then I was like, it's okay. I'll just transcribe it. So I started to transcribe it. And then I was like doing a little bit of it for Anna. And she was like, not only is that not funny, it's super boring. No one will enjoy that comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got halfway into the bit of like, and then I'll do a two and a half minute monologue before my wife saved you and this podcast audience from me being like, every day. I saw the same scenes and there's nothing you could do. <laughs> but the conclusion of this monologue is my favorite line in all of cinema. He can't drink his beer until he drinks it out of the bad guy's skull. Oh Pin in that. God. Pin in that. <laughs> Pin in that. And this is where he gets the new car from Webster. And that is his entire purpose to be in this movie. And he, he gives him a choice. Webster's like, all right, man. So uh, I guess the best way to chase a cult leader in an RV... <laughs> <laughs> is if I give you this 73 Chevelle. Yes. Yeah. So that's what they have for the rest of the movie. Is 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 a 73 Chevelle like an amazing muscle car that I don't know about? In my head, it's not. It's even weirder. <laughs> he unveils two cars. He does give him yeah. a case of two. What dramatic effect does revealing two cars and letting Nick Cage, the undead Avenger of his daughter's stolen baby, choose one achieve? <laughs> yeah, but, but hold on a minute. Because you're even over-dramatizing that. Because he doesn't actually, Nick Cage doesn't choose. He unveils both the cars in this big like, washapoa of the fucking covers or whatever, the dust covers. And then he's like, I believe you always liked the Chevelle. And like, well, why did you cover on the other? <laughs> just hand me the Chevelle. Right. Unless there are two Chevelles, one blue, one red. It's not like Nick Cage walks around and like there's like some weird car porn. Instead, it's yeah. just like two cars. <laughs> you can have the one on the left. I don't know how they don't have one of the options be like a Shelby from Gone in 60 Seconds. And he's like, ah, oh, Eleanor, there we go. Like that would yes, have been a do. great little yes, callback. Budget reasons. 
Yeah. You know exactly <laughs> why. They got these two cars on Facebook Marketplace three hours before they shot this movie. Also, you're not allowed to call back to any of Nick Cage's good movies. He just starts crying, and then the rest of the movie is him crying. That's what happened in Bad Lieutenant, Heath. You want another Bad Lieutenant? This is how you get another Bad Lieutenant. So they're driving off in their 73 Chevelle, which is apparently a nice car. Who the fuck knows? Uh, but wouldn't you know it? The cops pull up right behind them. Oh, God. How would the yeah. cops know? They're in a new car now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they kept the same license plate. They didn't How show the that. Cops? They put the old license plate Well, on. I think the, the budget cosplay Jim Jones called the cops on him and said he knew where they were, so maybe they followed him from the place. Oh. But then they just decided 50 or 60 miles down the road to turn the lights on and roadblock him. Right. Wait, so Jonah King, oh, the gosh. cult leader, called the cops and was like, listen, this guy whose car just broke down because I shot the off button on his Dodge Charger <laughs> is going to get picked up probably yes. by a roaming tow guy that he knows <laughs> named Webster. Here's the address. And he'll probably be driving a new car, possibly a 73 Chevelle. I need you to pull over a 73 Chevelle. It'll be red or blue. We haven't determined yet what color it'll be. <laughs> okay, that's the plot of the movie is what we're saying. Yes, that is exactly the plot of the movie. Yes. yeah, they, And they, also a, a 73 Chevelle is faster than a modern police car. <laughs> that's locked in, Heath. That's locked that's in. That's it. Got it. Yeah, that's canon. So yeah, they form a roadblock. The captain from earlier, who doesn't matter and never will, has this weird joke moment. Yeah, oh, yeah. God. Yeah. It was like his stand-up from the old folks home. He's like, now, I want, when I tell you all to shoot their tires, shoot them in the head. <laughs> so, so sh wait, shoot That's their the tires. Whole thing. Nope, wait, shoot sorry, I should have. Head. head. Yeah. If I was going to shoot my man in the head, fuck. All right. Yeah. Don't just murder Nicolas Cage and Amber Heard. Yeah. So they have the roadblock. He's got his cops ready to shoot to kill. Nick Cage and Amber Heard drive up the roadblock and they stop. So it seems like. They're in big trouble now, but... Yeah, because the, the cop cars, by the way, for the roadblock are arranged... Perfectly spaced Just, out. like, at, randomly, I think? Like, <laughs> like, I, I, like, like cop spaced. car dominoes, actually? Out. Like, yeah. uh, exactly one, then... Spa okay, that's how you do... Cop car Tetris, if you will. A roadblock. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, whenever you have a roadblock, you want to make sure that it would be technically possible to drive... Through the yeah. center of the road. You block. could weave through it. You could yeah. spin yeah. move and get through it for it's sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, they're never going to thread this needle. <laughs> the geometry <laughs> of, of this sort was way too confusing for Cage. He pulls over. He stops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like when you get a bear and you hold your hands over and they're like, whoa, what the fuck is oh, happening? Uh, they're <laughs> taller now. The thing's taller. That's so shit. Freaks out. But here's the important part. The accountant is here and he's going to fuck up the whole situation. <laughs> So the accountant, who is on enough. Cage's team uh, now, I'm not now. I, I don't know how. No idea why, why is happening. he. That's what's happened now, right? He's on Cage's. Team. He must be. Nobody knows what's happening in this. Yeah, team. he's definitely on Cage's team now. He's a hundred percent team Cage. So now, okay, because he's the moral center of the movie. Moral center. Okay, yes. so I'm driving to where you're at and fighting. He's very complex. He's the moral center. Amber Heard's the nougat center. I think we've already. <laughs> <got this. laughs> so the accountant has hijacked a truck full of hydrogen somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he's uh, just been driving it around the area. <laughs> yeah. They don't waiting to all. find maybe on one of these highways <laughs> a police blockade. The cop that got called by the right. satanic guy who knew that Webster was going to pick up Amber Heard and thank you. Yes. And, and Nick Cage earlier and then give him a Chevelle and stop him there. <laughs> <laughs> and now he drives the truck full of explosions through the roadblock. <laughs> okay. Oh, but he does it. But he does it, guys. Guys, he, this is a white person Bollywood movie at this point. <laughs> this is what happens is he blows up a bunch of these cars and these cars literally explode on contact. So he yeah, hits yeah, these yeah. cars and they are just boom, 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 exploding side by side. Cecil, then he hits one. They're covered in strike anywhere paint. Exactly. Like, yeah, they're, like, they're, like, they're like easy like charcoal. They're just like going up like crazy. And he turns the, so the, then at one point, he does a spin move and catches a cop car also pushing it sideways as they're sliding down the road. Oh, he casually beautiful. gets out of his car and stands <laughs> on the hood. <laughs> stands on the hood. <laughs> and then walks over the hood onto the cop car 
And then his car flips over two cars as Nick Cage drives under it and then is splody. So I think it's I got so it all. I think I don't good. know, but it was really Bollywood. It was 100% Bollywood. And the slide move when he's up on the hood yes. is my favorite part, possibly of the whole movie, because it's it's William Fickner doing another one of his like crazy <laughs> power move moments. Mm -hmm. yep. Everything he has to be like social dominance for this character. So he's sliding sideways during a car crash, explosions going all around him. And he's just like proudly like chest up, <laughs> sliding. He's in control of everything. He's peeing on somebody. Lighting a cigarette. He's, he's fucking a waitress, smoking a cigar. Yeah. It's the best. And the best part is all of these cars explode. Then the hydrogen truck explodes. Nobody is injured. Nobody. No. All the cops at the end are like, they're standing there. They're not, their clothes aren't even ruffled. They're just like, man, that was louder Moral than I expected, huh? Center of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but then, even better, he has destroyed several cars, helped Nick Cage and Amber Heard get away. And they're like, okay, well, we you're obviously a bad guy. You blew up several cars. And he's like, coin flip, FBI bad. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the FBI bad. Got me again. Oh. Then he made a balloon animal. It was great. It was, it was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, turns out you could do anything if you're FBI. Uh. Is it your birthday, little boy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Captain, you go first. <laughs> All right. So now we head over to the bad guys. And Nick Cage is like, here, you just hang out outside. I'm going to do the climax by myself. And she's like, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously going to join you for the climax of the movie. No, movies. don't. Uh, don't do that thing when you don't wait here after I say wait here. I feel like that always happens in every movie. <laughs> Can you just actually wait here? <laughs> no. Shit in my mouth now. God. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have stock footage. So first off, they are in the same exact warehouse shipyard that we've been having all these chase scenes in. Now they've just thrown now they've just thrown a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, different decorations. But it's clearly the same fucking yes, warehouse. Very district, much, yeah. right? It's clearly the same way. But now they're having a crawfish boil. So it's a little <laughs> different. <laughs> Honey Boo Boo's family reunion is happening or whatever. And this is another opportunity just to show random naked people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just for but they're not doing anything and most people aren't naked. So most people are are like <laughs> There's like <laughs> there's like That's one true. guy like not fire juggling just sort of like waving fire in a general direction of another guy. Then there's like a random naked person just sort of like absent-mindedly moving without any sense of music or rhythm. Mm -hmm. Everybody got different direction for that scene. Everybody got different blocking and everybody got oh. different direction. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, they're having a satanic orgy party. And all the unattractive people who started taking their clothes off were told, no, 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 not you. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, we all feel like we always feel about all orgies. Know this is you're a not better idea on paper. Off better idea on paper. Thank you. <laughs> Bottom of the extra barrel. But, my friends, if you watch these scenes closely, you will see who I believe is the moral center of the movie, which is... Fat extra who wrote too many Satan symbols on himself in Sharpie tried to wipe it off, but then they started shooting. He's going to star in an upcoming scene, but guy. he does appear in this crowd shot at first. Yes. And he is the hero American. <laughs> we also find out too at this point, because that whole scene's going on, but then Nick Cage... Are we at the point where he takes that girl? He grabs the girl? Are we at that point yet or not? Yeah, no? absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, this okay. is where Cage doubles back and finds yeah. out that Amber Heard did not listen to his classic movie trope. Just exactly. And the moral center of the movie, the accountant, <laughs> has her by the neck and is getting ready to cut her open. And then he barters with Nick Cage to put the gun down and say you're sorry or thank you or something. I don't know. He made him apologize or say thank. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. This scene is so bananas. He has already, <laughs> discriminated. He has already just demonstrated he is on Nick Cage's side. So he has her kidnapped and Nick Cage is like, wait, I thought you were on my side now. Like, I, want, I want the magic God gun that you shot at me and I want you to say thank you for flipping the car over the cops and doing the explosions. And Nick Cage does and he's like, there and that is the end of the fucking conflict yeah we also find out too that satan is kind of a cool guy he's a really nice guy you just got to get to know him like you know satan is a very yeah. he's a, he's a well read dude he doesn't like it when people could sacrifice babies to him that's a little weird he feels weird about it it's <laughs> such a weird yeah. scene it's like he's like <laughs> satan doesn't like it when people do all this satanic shit 
He just thinks that's weird. You guys are weird. <laughs> <laughs> Who? How did Satan's lawyer get this written into the movie? And like, oh, delicious Diet Pepsi. Also, Satan is uh, actually more about making Christians behave themselves under Supreme Court law. So yeah, the more you learn. You know what he's been listening to on Audible? Satan? He's, he's listening to a lot of stuff on Audible. He's listening to a libertarian walks into a bear right now. Satan hates Happiest libertarians. Happiest toddler on the out. block. You should check it out. Happiest toddler on the block. <laughs> One other question here. So a big deal it's a is book that book about how to no, not, a not, that's not that's not my question. That's not my question. <laughs> my question is about this gun, the God Killer gun. I have so many questions about this. Okay, why? Good, good. <laughs> would Satan create a gun that could be stolen from him and then kill him or his accountant or his minions? Why have that gun? I think it was like a can God make a mountain he can't move situation. He got tricked into it. Okay. <laughs> but then but then Satan would not be able to make that gun. Or would he? Another <laughs> question about that gun, though, is that gun, as I understand it, is a get out of hell gun. Yes. You're just obliviated. Right. Which is so, demonstrably better than hell. Than hell. So if somebody wait, if you, points wait, that if you gun get at shot me, with that gun, you... Go to heaven? It just ceased to exist. You no, it yeah. ceased to exist. Yeah, it's, it's a reality gun. It basically right. <laughs> is. Yeah. Oh, if you get shot with this gun in hell, you go no, to earth in again? Real li in life. In life. The people that he shoots, they just cease to exist. They, they explain right. it at one point where they yeah, say- they get darwin You don't yeah. get to go to heaven or hell. You don't exist anymore. And I'm just like, yeah, that's what happens to everybody, guys. You don't need to get shot with a gun. You can go any way you want. Although that yeah. does work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not ruling it out, Tom, but I am saying there's other methods too. There are other you options. Know? I mean, there's 500,000 people lost their, their coat, lost their fight with COVID. I mean, yeah, recently. Right. So, yeah. So Fun fact, that's all the guns. <laughs> right. If I was in hell, I can't imagine anything less intimidating than a gun that gets me out of hell. Like, <laughs> you, don't shoot me with that. Oh, no. Actually, you know what? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now it's time for Jonah to do his like bad guy monologue <laughs> and the only way I can explain this monologue and this is my theory they told this actor at some point Nick Cage is going to drive his Dodge Charger Chevrolet Chevelle. whatever the fuck it is whatever 73 he, Chevelle he's going to drive this car that we like in but I'm not going to tell you when so you have to do <laughs> villain monologue until Nick Cage drives Like in. somebody's about to throw a ball in your <laughs> face from just out of the frame and you don't know when. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I. this scene is where Nick Cage drives around to save a baby and just <laughs> indiscriminately <laughs> smashes into people and only accidentally does not hit that baby with that car. That baby was that baby was safe. It was it was tucked away in a pier one basket. It in was a, perfectly a nice, safe. A nice wicker safe basket. Very. Yes, very good point. <laughs> Wicker baskets are safe when the oh, flaming car safe. is driving around. Yeah. You can use that as a car seat if you want. It's fine. Absolutely. Yeah, it's crash test. When Heath was growing up, that was his car seat. <laughs> <laughs> Strapped on top of the car with two firm pieces of rope. Okay, question about how Nick Cage got here. So they're at an old abandoned prison, right? Okay, so yes. he lost a bunch of money in the Bernie Madoff stuff. So he just <laughs> to make it back doing some action movies. He does doing the Rock, every movie ever he offered. He does Con yes. Air yes. because John Malkovich asks him yeah. to be on it. Yeah. Okay, he drives to this old abandoned prison where this satanic cult has taken over and used the prison courtyard inside the walls as their orgy area. And that's where we are. Slash crawfish cook, yes. Yes. Nick Cage drives a flaming car <laughs> up a ramp that ramp. they had a ramp. on the yeah, side of the prison. A every the prison, prison ramp. ramp. Yes. Prison yeah, ramp. every prison. When ramp. was that ramp useful to the prison? For ramp, <laughs> for ramp prisoning, prison yeah. ramping. I don't know that it's an OEM ramp. I think that yeah. was probably an aftermarket <laughs> ramp when the prison went... <laughs> it's <laughs> there's a bunch of ramps in this universe. There were ramps in yeah. that abandoned warehouse absolutely. earlier. Well, we're in the same fucking place, yeah. so I guess absolutely that's you're why, in the same spot. You can't yeah, so. have a movie with a classic American muscle cars like the '73 Chevelle and not have ramps. <laughs> <laughs> there's a point too where this woman who is holding the baby keeps on like, so she's supposed to kill the baby, right? So she has the yes, baby. babysitter lady. She's yeah. supposed to kill the baby, but the whole time she's like, aren't you a cute widow baby? Aren't you a sweet widow baby? Who's got widow toes, baby? Okay, the whole time. 
I created an entire subplot for this woman that she was just like someone they got off care.com. I, <laughs> <laughs> I have it too. Yeah. She looks confused. Like this is the weirdest nanny gig I have. <laughs> you guys did not sell this right. I mean, mm, all right. Yes. If I knew CPR, I don't even think that's relevant. I have a knife. No, no. no <laughs> She looks Such like she's go, this is going on Yelp. This is definitely. Am going I gonna on Yelp. get? Uh, am I gonna get a one star review if I don't kill the baby, or a five star review if I do kill the baby? Oh, I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> it's gonna fuck up my whole background check. I mean, if I kill the baby, like, do I get paid for the whole weekend? I just feel like I'm babysitting <laughs> is over. I don't know. I get a ride home. I don't have PayPal. I have Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't have both. <laughs> Classic babysitters. The guy also kills two people. The the accountant also kills two people with one coin at a certain yeah. point. In this oh, oh, yeah. He oh, yeah. throws the coin so out. So the Limpy McGee guy from the very first scene of the movie got his fucking leg chunked. Like literally chunked with a shotgun. <laughs> you fucking, no way you're ever walking again. Chases this guy up to a fucking the parapet <laughs> of a prison. Somehow, I don't know. They fucking catapulted him up there on one of the many ramps, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, here he is standing there, and the and then the accountant flicks or throws the coin through a guy's face and then bounces through another guy's chest, like two guys with one coin. It was a really great, really great, <laughs> awesome scene. Back and then into he came, the left. Yeah. Was, yeah. And yeah. They cut it, but he turned it into a badge right after he caught yeah. it. So <laughs> I really wanted it to turn into a badge halfway into the guy's head. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry. It, it's a five. It's on a timer. Can yeah. I? <laughs> I gotta. Oh, can I? You hold still and I'll pull. Don't, don't, don't move it. Stop moving. Stop moving. You made it worse. <laughs> but yeah, they're shooting. At one point, bad guy has a Tommy shotgun. Yes. Yeah, there's a, a one with a drum. He's got a shotgun with a drum on it. He pulls that out out of a cooler, which is the best place to store all your weaponry in a wet place like a cooler. That's the best place <laughs> yeah. you want to do it. So and so Nick Cage like finally gets out of the car. The bad guys thwack him with pipes in the silliest possible manner. Oh, hold on, though. Hold on, oh. though. They shoot him in the back with a shotgun. Right. So he gets shot in the back with a shotgun. And we didn't know this throughout the whole movie, but that is his weakness. Getting shot in the back with a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, that is, is where Cage's the wounds weakness. become real. That it definitely stings. At his Achille, Achilles sting. heel is shotgun blast to the back, I guess. <laughs> right. I don't know. But, but just in case you were going to take that seriously, he begins to crawl along the ground. And as I mentioned, the bad guys thwack at him mm -hmm. with the with like the silliest they might as well take a rubber chicken and like whoop, <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. and also nick cage is exhausted two crawls in right he's like crawl crawl <laughs> sleepy time for nick <laughs> so you see these poor extras being like thwack thwack nick you're supposed to keep crawling Whack! <laughs> Whack! Yeah. My arm is getting tired. That Please scene make. actually was filmed over the course of 14 days, Eli. It was 14 yeah. days. <laughs> yeah. He threw his back out first day. That's why it's so slow. He yeah. can't even move. It inspired boyhood, the thwacking <laughs> scene. <laughs> but finally, he crawls over. He gets the the bad guy obliviating not go to heaven or hell gun, and he shoots the bad guy with it. Yeah. Oh, and then you get the literal best special effects you've ever seen in your entire life. They do not look like high school AV club after effects for a group project that three out of four people phoned in. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I'm just, it doesn't look like that is what I mean. You do get the skull. His skull flies up. Top of his skull flies up and skips on the ground. <laughs> Pin in that for later. Yeah. That's important. A little and ghost comes out of him. Shaped yeah. like a, a beer bowl. <laughs> So that'll be useful. <laughs> Ancient peoples used to drink beer out of bowls. Anyway, go ahead. No, keep going. Stupid, stupid historically. It's stupid. Drawn it's dumb. It's dumb. 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 <laughs> ruining our podcast. <laughs> so now, if you would like to buy doing your beer ruining our podcast. As, I'm doing a beer bowls <laughs> as a citation needed in the future. Would you so drink you shit all. nougat out of a beer bowl? <laughs> if there was a 50-50 chance of it either being me or Amber Heard. <laughs> Oh, easy. Check the color. Red, Eli, white, <laughs> Amber Heard. You, there you go. Obvious. Easy. Red, white, and Amber Heard. That is an album that we're never going to get to make. America. <laughs> so now, sadly, Milton is dying from his wounds. Why? Mm, no idea. Because. Because it got shot in the back, I said it earlier. Yeah, that hurts. Yeah. yeah. Eli, way more than in the eye. <laughs> he gives... <laughs> 
He gives Amber Heard the baby, um, and he's like, here, this is your baby now. <laughs> That's why you've been in the movie. And she's holding it out like I hold a baby at fucking rigid arm length. Like, I don't want to touch this. Why am I touching this? I don't want to touch this. I just want to go fucking drop this off at a firehouse and do meth. What the fuck? If she's just like, no, it's not my baby. <laughs> Credits. That, that would have been fun. Yeah, she's like, I picked up a hitchhiker. Now I've killed two cops and I got a baby. <laughs> Yo, well, Nick Cage says, I chose you for a reason. Yeah, I mean, you were the first person in the diner that I saw. So <laughs> that's why you've been in the movie. Well, it was that or that lady who had the hand wrestle with me and tried to fuck me. And then the <laughs> hand wrestle lady was a little, she didn't I didn't get... like her grip. I thought her grip was weak. So I chose yeah. you instead. <laughs> you have the grip for a person who should raise my grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> and then he vanishes. He vanishes like Batman. Yeah. And then, and you're thinking, wait, Eli, I'm sorry. Did you just say, and then like, there's another scene. Oh yeah. 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 Yep. No, it's not over. Amber Heard walks away and then Nick Cage comes out from the room he's been hiding in. <laughs> he's just sitting there. He woke back up. Yeah. Just to be clear, this was Nick Cage's plan. All right, I'll pretend it's a shotgun <laughs> that the satanic leader shot me with, killed me. I'll be like, blur. And then when Amber Heard looks away to the baby I just handed her, reasonably distracted by that new responsibility, I'll do, I'll do a barrel roll into a nearby shed. And then when she leaves, I'll come out and drink a beer out of yeah. the dead guy's skull. Out of the dead guy's skull. But he's, drink, he's drinking beer out of the bad guy's skull because yep. it's his big victory moment. But Nick Cage is, I love it. He's just going nuts with like, Gesticulating with the beer bowl skull it's thing. Of skull. Skulls are full of holes, so and, and they're holes in skulls. Yes, correct. Especially <laughs> if you shoot them with a gun, they often have <laughs> yeah. deformities of some sort. Sure. So the beer's just spilling everywhere, and he's loving it. He's so like he could have picked up like an octopus from the ground there and just found a way to play with it and like mm -mm. mess around. Oh. Love Nick Cage and Fickner. The two That's of them right. crushed it in this movie. It's a, this is a genuinely <laughs> great movie worth watching. Before we end, though, Eli, can you sing the song for us? Absolutely. Because the song, I don't know if you guys, the last song is Eli singing a song. It's Meatloaf. <laughs> I don't know if you, did you hear the Meatloaf song? Absolutely. The last, Jesus. I, I literally wrote down, oh, they couldn't afford Meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a Meatloaf song. They tried to do Bad Out of Hell, but like yeah. it's, it's, you know, Eli doing Alive. like the fake. Eli, in the notes, I have put, this the lyrics so i don't know if you want to read this you could also listen to it briefly with the youtube link there for that song i got it i will do a dramatic reading <clears throat> all right here we go oh, you have to do the whole thing this. i'm still alive must have been a miracle it's been a hell of a ride destination still unknown <laughs> oh, it's God. a fact to life if you make one wrong move with a gun to your head you'd better walk the line or you'll be left for dead <laughs> <laughs> I'm a runaway train <laughs> on a broken track. I'm a ticker on a bomb. You can't turn back time. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just stopped. You that had feels back. Like copyright you had back and then you timed. Feels like, you had it. Feels you like had the rhyme. You should. I got away oh. with it and I'm still alive. Let the end of the world come tumbling down. I'll be the last man standing on the ground. <laughs> As long as I've got blood rushing through my veins, I'm still alive. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's and then they drive back to hell. I would drive back to hell. They drive back to hell. They jump into hell. Or uh, I really want to or... watch him doing like car games on the way to hell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the one note I had is he lets Nick drive them back to hell, which seems like a bad idea since he's the one who escaped in the first place. But I really wanted when the accountant goes to get in, he does that thing where you like drive a little bit while your buddy's trying to get in. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, Nick, come on. No, <laughs> That was amazing. <laughs> oh God. Uh -huh. Amazing. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it this time. I, seriously, I'm not gonna do it this time. Get I in, did get it. Again. Again. <laughs> Would have been amazing. <laughs> I just want to mention one other thing. At the end of this movie, I was watching on Peacock, where they have it for free, if you have free Peacock. Next up, they were certain, Peacock was certain that I wanted to watch Two Headed Shark Attack. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And Me then too. they Me were too. also certain that after I watched Drive Angry and Two-Headed Shark Attack. I wanted to see 
Leprechaun in the Hood. <laughs> I didn't get that one. I got, wait, do you not want to see Leprechaun in the Hood? <laughs> I got like, season three of The Office. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see if they would keep going and like name all these movies we've literally done. On <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I was really sad they didn't suggest Frasier because a remake of Drive Angry starring the cast of Frasier. <laughs> Kelsey Grammer is the Amber Heard part. Come on. Come on. Also, Frazier's is just a good show. Great show. A good show. Love it. All right. Last thing before we wrap it up. <laughs> what do you think the title meant, actually? Drive. It like, like, doesn't drive. Are sense. you, you're driven mad? Dri you dr it drives you angry. I don't. Is that what they're going for? Just, mm. You're giving this way yeah. too much credit. More, way know. more thought than the people who made the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> far, yeah. This was like a throw. We should name the movie something. I don't know. Just drive angry. Oh, we forgot to name the movie. Yeah. What has it? Cars. Anger. Good. Bro, put it out okay. there. Okay. Either either I break for pussy or drive angry. Those are the first <laughs> things we see All in right. the bumper. So. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's going to do it for our review of Drive Angry. Fuck the pain away. <laughs> Fuck the pain away. <laughs> Indeed. But that's not quite going to do it for the episode just yet because we found another terrible movie for next week. So, Eli, what's on deck? Well, Heath, I heard a rumor that every time we do a review of Christian boy wonder Matt Powell's movies, he gets extra special famous. So we'll be reviewing his latest release, The Atheist Religion. Fantastic. We are very religious <laughs> in our religion. <laughs> so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 290 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Tom and Cecil for joining us. Anything you guys want to plug? Anything coming up soon? Place people should go? Yeah, uh, citationpod.com. Great <laughs> show. Citation needed. Wonderful show. We also do cognitive dissonance, dissonancepod.com. But you go to citation needed and you catch us with your favorite guys every week. That's right. Fantastic. Check it out. What is it called? Citation? Needed. Needed. <laughs> Got needed. it. Needed. You're on it, so you should know it. And, <laughs> quit the show. And of course, <laughs> a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, you should check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist. What was the show again? Cecil, you said? It's in the notes. You could just read it. Citation needed? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Yeah. The Skeptocrat and D&D &D Minus <laughs> available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. And we're going to need them this week. And maybe <laughs> we're going to have to edit hard to avoid Oof. dipping into that work. Yep. So our theme song... By the way, it was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. One All guy. of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Also one guy. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Tom, Cecil, and Eli, I'm Heath, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House Breakfast House Post. Post. Animal House Post. Breakfast. Animal House Post, Tom. Nicholas Cage would go on to play himself in his biopic, Paycheck, I'll Suck Your Dick. <laughs> <laughs> William Fickner still has not won the Academy Award. He <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Moral center of the movie. So political. Nicolas Cage would go on to play himself having to be his characters to save his family's life in an upcoming <laughs> film. <laughs>
I would like. Oh, that. don't worry. The quietness is in there. <laughs> <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright twenty twenty one. All rights reserved.